All right, everyone. Welcome to the. Uh, I can't even get it out. Budget work. Budget, budget work, work session. Thank you. Sorry. Can, sound okay? Yep. Okay. All right. So we will start off um, with. Uh, roll. Roll call. Roll okay. Call. Absolutely. We'll do Councilman Cobb. Here. Uh, Councilwoman Eagleston. Here. Vice Mayor Cook. Here. Mayor Lowry. Here. Uh, Councilwoman Hopkins. Here. Councilman Grimm. Here. Councilwoman Eagleston. Nowakowski. <laughs> Here. All present. Thank you, sir. Mm -hmm. Tonight, today, tonight's, this afternoon's invocation will be by Councilwoman Hopkins. As soon as I turn off my phone, we don't want to hear who let the dogs out during prayer. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes me smile every time. Dear Heavenly Father, we come here today to set a budget for New Carlisle and hopefully with your guidance we can do what's right for all the citizens. And please protect all the first responders and our troops and amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Why did you get so tall? I barely come to your show. How tall are you? 6'3". So, real quick, Randy, I'll hand this over to you so you guys can kick things off because I know this is all about you. But, you know, for those of you who have not, on council, who have maybe not sat through one of these or is new to it, um, just, you know, again, Randy, Deb, Mr. Kitko, you know, everyone on the admin side, thanks for all the work you guys put into this. Uh, I know it takes a lot of time, headache, uh, Tylenol, stress. So, no sleep. No sleep. So um, <laughs> thank you very much. Thank you. And we appreciate that. I know, but I still need sleep. And with that being said, I'll hand it over to you. Well, thank you. Uh, Debbie's done a lot of hard work on this. So this is the year that, you know, Debbie did it. So really all the hard work uh, really goes to Debbie. We appreciate your hard work on this. Uh, we did meet the session and kind of go over it. We're going to do things a little different this year with the budget work session. Usually in the past, I just did it all. And we're actually going to switch it up a little bit. Uh, Debbie's going to take uh, some of the general fund, most of it. And how he's going to talk about his funds, and the fire chief's going to talk about his funds. I also have invited uh, that to then there is Derek Hutchinson. He is our current water operator, but he is the guy that I would be bringing on as our planning director. Um, Derek has very much experience with this uh, uh, endeavor. He is about ready to uh, in, uh, uh, go on. He's worked for Fairborn. He's done some code rewrites for other big cities. So very well qualified to be here we wanted him to be a part of the process today so thank you derek for taking time out of your busy day to join us so you want to guarantee to work for twenty five thousand a year no 23. 23. yes okay. he's a bargain bargain he's a bargain bargain yeah absolutely so without further ado i will let debbie kind of take it from here i will be chiming in uh, occasionally so Debbie, floor is yours. So let me let me first um, by Gerald here, um, just to let you know, there's water in the back. There's um, cookies um, back there also. So at some point we should take a little break in between, so we're not crazy. Yes. Um, so let me explain the forms that the the packet that I gave you and how it, it, what it means. So each fund, if you see the green on the side, that is usually all the revenues. So there's, those are amounts that are pretty much set in stone that you don't change. You know, they come from the county. They come from what we've received in the past. So those aren't numbers that you will be working on. Um, all the numbers, all the things in yellow are numbers that you we're going to discuss and work on together as a team to see where we go. The first column is the numbers that Randy uh, proposed this morning um, here. and. Then the second column that says council, that's where your numbers. Um, those are the same numbers that Randy has, so you can see what he wanted, but as we speak about them, then you can change them yourself. And so um, anybody have any questions with this particular thing to begin with? <coughs> okay, so we'll start going down. So the first page is pretty much all green. That is, oh, and the other section that's green is wages. So wages is something uh, we don't, we know how much we have to spend on wages, so it's not something that we really play with either. So if we have some discussion on how much we put there, whether it's grown from prior years, then we'll discuss that um, at that moment. But most of the wages won't change either. Okay, so the first page is pretty much all green, and that's revenues and the wages at the top. 
So then when we come down to the yellow, uh, these are the mounts you can see in the 2019 com column, which is the second column, uh, well actually on the white side, the second column, is what we actually spent in 19. So, as we say that, so the first line we see there is training, travel, and transportation. This is under council. Um, we have never usually sent anyone anywhere. We didn't last year. Um, so we only spent $28 last year for probably some mileage. But Randy has proposed $3,000 so that um, you might want to go to some training for city council members, some meetings. So that's why 3000 is in there. So I don't know if you just want to kind of only raise your hand if you want to change it, and then we'll discuss it. If you want to keep it the same, we'll just move to the next line item. How's that? Does that work? Or sure. Is that okay? Okay. All right. So 3000 is in there. So we'll keep 3000 in there, and we'll move forward. Okay. So the next line is maintenance of facilities, and that currently has $2,000 in it. So that basically is for... Um, what is maintenance? What will we use that for? Uh, we just kind of... It's, it's a catch-all. You guys don't have a home, per se, so um, <laughs> say maybe you guys want a specific chair or something for a council meeting yeah. that yeah. could go... So anything that, there. yeah, we need, we can use, like, if council gets new chairs at the shelter house, if we decide new tables, new things like that. Um, maintenance of facilities is, uh, part, you know, just things that... Go ahead. The last three columns, those are what we actually spent those years? Yes. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Mm -hmm. So, yes, the last three. I have a question. Sure. Um, 1878 is what we spent last year, mm -hmm. right? Yep. What if we spend it on just a general idea? You should have to pull um, up in the report. Yeah. Um, you don't yeah, have, to, have to. do that. We'll get back to you. We'll have to pull I can up pull up exact amounts for that. So. But I don't need them. I mean, I was just curious what we spent on it because we're at the shelter house is that what we would be yes, yes. mostly um I'm trying to remember i can't remember everything because the am. tables clerk that pays all the bills that come in um we'll pull the but i can pull just that for, for you find out. and pull that okay i, I was just actually curious. In, in the break if uh use a computer i could get on and remote into my computer and, and look that up if we need to so um, next one, maintenance of equipment. That could be anything from um, when we do the council meetings, any kind of equipment we use, any of the, you know, the, the microphones, the, it could be the nameplate, it could be anything like that that we use for you. Um, we spent nothing last year, but we're putting that in there because you are getting um, the iPads. So mm -hmm. that would be maintenance of the equipment for those. That's why we put the $1,000 in there. Um, the membership dues and publications, uh, we spent $1,099 last year. Randy said there he upped it to $1,500, and I'm, I'm not sure what all the oh, memberships just... Oh, I know, but it is the same as $1,500 you put okay. in there. Okay. Okay. I was just looking at the next line. Sorry. Yeah, no worries. So it's still $1,000. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that completes the contractual up there, the, the office supplies. Last year, we spent $492 for council, different, um, sometimes we divvy up like if we, you know, paper that we print the reports on, things like that come out of there. Um, but with, uh, so we upped it a little more to $1,000 uh, for any kind of supplies or things we might need for council. Um, the operational supplies, we spent $777. We upped that to <coughs> $2,000. Operational supplies could be anything from, uh, once again, uh, the operate of council. So anything that we utilize for meetings. Um, sometimes business cards. What business, business cards, cards? Anything like that mm -hmm. um, comes out of there too. So we, we have a little. You know, we've upped a few of the amounts just so council um, moving forward the new things and the, and the thing. Now that we have seven people. <laughs> There's things that might come up that you'd like for us to have at meetings or do things. So we just want to make sure that the money is here. And that that's, uh, I want you to think that along those lines for everything I talk about because this is where we put enough money in there so that if something happens, we have enough. This isn't where we really cut the spending because we want to make sure the money's there to spend because we have it. It's there. We're just appropriating it, saying, 
it's there. That's how much we have. We can spend up to that amount. If we don't put enough in there, what that causes is more legislation, um, more ordinances um, to go back to the county, change our numbers, come back to you, change everything and do all this all over again, this, the, these, these reports and things. So if you put enough money in to begin with, we don't have to do that much and it costs us less money all the way around, even with an attorney looking at our ordinances. So just explain why we've, you know, put, we pad some of these numbers. Moving along, $6,000 in capital outlay. That is, um, that's the iPads. Okay, there you go, those are the iPads. The miscellaneous, I always put a thousand, I try to always put a thousand dollars in a miscellaneous account because if a bill comes in and I, ha I have a thousand dollars and it comes in at a thousand eighteen cents, I need the eighteen cents from somewhere. So miscellaneous just as a catch all for any other thing like that, that maybe, maybe I didn't uh, put enough in, you know, this uh, budget uh, for a line item and there's, I have a thousand dollars to keep, to do that. So that takes care of the council's expenses. Is there anybody want to talk about any of those? Don't feel comfortable with any of those? I've got a question. Sure. If we get um, the whiteboard that we were talking about for the shelter house for during meetings, will that come out of operational supplies or? That will come out of your um, capital for parks. We'll probably take it out of shelter house renovations. Okay. Yeah. And that comes later. And that's point. really only depend on like if it's if we can get something for under two thousand or twenty one hundred, whatever the capital purchase threshold is, we can expend that out of. So you can take five hundred out of miscellaneous or five hundred out of office supplies and do it like that. Okay. So it's only that that bottom dollar amount if it reaches over that twenty one, then we'll have to put it into real capital. But that's just going to be a glorified smart TV. We we'll probably get that done for. Three or four hundred bucks. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, Does that answer your question now? Yes, it does. You are just amazing. <coughs> well, thank you. All right. You want to do your city manager? Yeah, absolutely. So, city manager, clearly me. Um, wage is eighty-five thousand. Uh, I currently make eighty-one. Uh, so there's a little buffer there. I'm not expecting, or would I accept any raise for this year? So thank you. Um, but that would that I would like to keep the same. Uh, Medicare, when we look at the subsequent uh, charges for the wages, we always have a ripple effect. So anytime that we do any kind of wages, we immediately have to go, we have to compute the best that we can, the Medicare, the PERS, the workman's comp. The Medicare, what we do is we must multiply whatever that wage dollar is amount, and we take it, we multiply it by like 7.7% .7 or the case may be, because 1.4% of that is for Medicare, but then we also have 6.2% 6 .6 withholding of Social Security. So we do have to account for that. So when you see that in there, um, that actually should be adjusted because that's not correct. So actually this is one. Yeah, the Medicare and City Manager. Um, times 7.7%. That actually needs to be 65.45. I think it's updated on my, let me see something real quick. Is it updated on Yeah, I think I did it online. No, I didn't. I think so. Okay, so that's going to be 65.45 um, and we'll, if you guys want to make note of that. So right now it says 1500 But basically what we need to do is take that 85000 and times it by that 7.7% to, again, account for the Medicaid and then, I mean, Medicare and then also Social Security withholdings. So we do the similar thing with PERS. And PERS is a straight 14% is what we are required to contribute as the employer. So it's simple. Take the 85000 and times that by 14%. about eleven thousand nine hundred dollars so we have a little buffer in there workman's comp we really don't know what that's going to be on a given year so we just kind of go with it we look at our past history and we see you know all right past you know we 35 32 so yeah 45 is probably good you don't know what's going to happen I could get hurt or something you know God forbid you know we're on a pool to that together so we just want to make sure there's enough there so we have to go back and redo the appropriations measure because we didn't have enough in there Medical insurance is usually just a set amount. We know how much the city pays for that premium, so we can do the math on that by 12, we pay monthly. And then the dental insurance is a, is a set rate, and so is a life, AD, and long term. So when you're looking at the total personnel service city manager, it is your actual wages and then your what I call the fringe benefit. So that's something that's always mandated by the state or the federal government, so there's not much we can do about that one. <coughs> Training and travel transportation. I did reduce myself. We originally had $3,000 in there. Uh, I did reduce myself down to two. Um, because when you look at my history, I, I, I trained myself a lot 
um, the best I can with going to conferences, and never once have I went over 1500 <clears throat> So I didn't think 3000 would be a fair price, so I did knock that down to 2000 Communication services, we can look at the history. We know what it's going to be generally through and throughout the year. We do like a little buffer in there for any kind of unforeseen uh, issues. And the same thing with posted meters, fees, maintenance of equipment, and membership dues and publications. So when you look at the contractual for us, we really didn't increase it much from years past. Um, we do like to go off the history. So you can look at 2019 actual to kind of get this <coughs> idea of where maybe that's going to end for 2020. But again, we do like that extra buffer just in case we do go over. <coughs> and we don't have to go through the legislation process because that can be lengthy and pricey. So we scroll on down. Any questions on what I've went over so far with the city manager? What's up, sir? On your postage and handling, mm -hmm. is that also included the new water bill going out? That right there, what that line item is for is if I do mailings to residents, if I do mailings to business owners, um, and we put it through the postage meter machine, it comes out of my account. Okay. That's what that means. Mm -hmm. Anytime I misspeak, please let me know. Well, the qu his question was, where's the mailing amount coming out of, if you want to just that's going to that. yeah, that's coming kind out of the water. 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 Yeah, it's going to be split between just water so and wastewater. Knows that, yeah. Yeah, the utility funds. We'll take care of with the new building. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Thank you. All. Sure. So materials and supplies, office lies. When I look at my history, I didn't need a thousand. Um, I did knock that down to seven fifty. Uh, my laptop's good. I, I don't need a stapler. I don't need kind of any big items. I don't see for twenty twenty. Um, I like to kind of focus my funds on the <coughs> city building, moving into that. So uh, I did reduce that only by two fifty, but it is a reduction. So looking at the past history, I don't even really come close to using that thousand. So I thought seven fifty was a good middle ground for that. Um, operational supplies, uh, we kept that at 500 last year history, about 241, 240, 372. So again, we just left it in there to account for any sort of buffer. Uh, fuel, um, I do get reimbursed for my fuel. I don't do it as much as I should, but it, that is in there for the times if I have to drive to Columbus or you know go multiple trips to Springfield in a week, then I may put in for reimbursement on the gas, stuff like that. Uh, but um, it's been the same as it's, as it's been. I think in 18, I kind of did about 454. I don't foresee that for this coming year, so I think I, I'm comfortable with 250. And then we have the same amount for the repair and maintenance of supplies, which is, which is 100. Um, I did reduce my small tools and minor equipment by 500 to 1,000, because again, I'm not anticipating me having to buy mm -hmm. any kind of things because I bought a lot of that in 18 and 19. Yes, Mr. Bridge. On your fuel, um, mm -hmm. so do you, I mean, do you turn your fuel in all the time, every time? Um, I'm getting better at it, but I don't, I don't charge the city for a lot of the things I do. And I really hope and wish you would. Well, the thing with that is, if you want to be very honest, it goes against my income and then my school loan payments go. Okay. So if I go and I put, you know, I put in three thousand dollars throughout the year, now my income goes up by that, and then okay. they so. You kind of pick and choose. It's a sad situation to say, but I'd rather just eat the fuel cost opposed to having my school loan payments go up $100 a month. I mean, if you're okay with it, then I'm okay yeah. with it. One okay. of the things that I I would prefer to, this year I'm not changing descriptions of line <laughs> items, things like that, but reimbursement of his mileage would not need to, um, that's just a straight reimbursement that he's allowed, which would not hurt your school loans or anything. And so it goes to my income every year. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. Mm -hmm. It doesn't. It doesn't get added to your wages on your W-2 mileage reimbursement. Yeah, it does. No. Well, I think of how the city does because if you look at my paycheck, it may not. No, that would mean I'm getting a separate W-9 or something, right? No, 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 no. no. It's just a no. straight reimbursement. It's a reimbursement. No. Well, I don't still don't want it because I thought okay. I, I just want to say that I would want to know that that was, I was a way at to X amount of yeah. dollars, but then it was way more than what I way more than what I thought it was going to be. So I just assumed the extra income was based off the gas mileage. And as long as you're okay with it, then I'm fine. Yeah. No, I'm fine. Well, what if you were to use a gas card? Well, now that's what this fuel, is that when you bought fuel, actual fuel? Have you ever bought actual fuel? No, I've never no this is where we're that. coding your, yeah. yeah, your mileage. So, yeah, and then you didn't do anything. Okay. Well, that's not true because last year. Well, I it wasn't. It didn't come out of the fuel line. Gotcha. That's all I'm saying. Got, okay, so it where came, came out from of travel out and. Gotcha. Yeah, I'm okay with it. I'm not. I'm not too concerned about it. Alrighty. So what made my income go up last year? Though? Well, you got to you you made it go up. You got a raise. What do you no, mean? No, I know I got a raise. Actual, I, I know I got that, but there's additional income. Mm-hmm. No. From from that, 
to this. I understand that, yeah. but it was you higher think, than that. Would you like a deduction? You no, you're good. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> you're fine. You are fine. <coughs> All right, so capital, um, I actually reduced that, 7000 down to 3500 Um 7000 was earmarked for a new office at the furniture, uh, at the city building for me. I am not going to need that much. So um, I'd knock mine down about half to 3500 if council's okay with that. Um, and then miscellaneous spending we have still at a thousand, I think maybe, I think he thinks maybe it's received, received out of miscellaneous. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, miscellaneous last year was nine, nine, 995, so we did stick with a thousand again. When we look at the reduction of the city manager side of things, we definitely hit it on the capital because I don't think I'm going to need that much money to outfit my one office. Um, I can do a lot of things with a little bit of money with that kind of thing. So, um, and then we looked at office supplies and also small schools and minor <coughs> and then also training, travel, and transportation. So overall, the city manager uh, total expense looks like it's about one thirty-five, dollars $135,095. Any questions? Doesn't appear to be. Do you have something, Mr. Cook? It was PERS. That's what it was. Okay, because I was going to say it's got nothing to do with it. It was PERS. Okay, forget it. We figured okay. it out. My PERS wasn't the right. Yeah, because reimbursement never gets added to your income. Right. No, you know, it was PERS because I got cashed out for vacation. That's uh, what made it go up, uh, not my gas mileage. But you should get oh. gas. You should do the gas mileage. It's part of my job. Feet, now that I know that wasn't it. <laughs> <Don't lie. laughs> it's part of your job. Yeah, now I think about it, I did. I cashed out vacation and that shot of it. Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. huh? When you're ready. Okay. Yeah. All right. So moving on to finance, the section of finance. Once again, the wages, overtime, Medicare, all those things pretty much stay the same. They go up a little bit if somebody, you know, it depends on if raises anything. Um, sometimes if um, somebody uh, gets hurt, you know, with the, our, our workers' comp payments go up. Anyway, that, that pretty much is the same. So going down to training, travel, and transportation. Uh, last year we spent $34.69. Um, I'm required to get training by the, um, by the ORC. And so with that, um, and we went to the SSI because it was new uh, software. We went to training. That's what we spent it on. Um, hotels are getting really expensive. Um, and I'd like, uh, nobody in the office has typically in the past gotten to go get trained at some of these uh, conferences or so last year I brought Vicki to one or last year I brought Vicki and Victoria to one. So that's why it's 5,000, a little bit more than the prior year. Um, anyway, delinquent tax collection, those are just delinquent tax collection fees that we have to pay. Contracted tax collection services, that's what we pay CCA. Um, communication services is Bridge Group mostly for anything we have to do. We divvy up, when, when we get a bill from Bridge Group, every department pays for that. Um, usually we try to divvy it up by like that. So you'll see a little bit in communication everywhere. Uh, the postage, uh, that was up to 2000 because part of that um, postage so uh, let me let me rephrase this. Some of the things that you see what we spent in in 19. If it looks like we spent every penny of what we had appropriated, uh, you know, or budgeted for the year before, it means sometimes that I had we had we spent even more than that, and I just pulled it from somewhere else. That happened quite often. So if I up the figures a little bit, it's because I know that we needed a little more money in that from what we've paid in the past. So if you go down there, the normal things, postage, bank service charges, I'm hoping once I switch banks that that's going to go down. But right now we're going to keep it at that. Maintenance of facilities, we put $1,500 in there. That's just, if we do this move, the six more months that we're in the building, if anything needs fixed or repaired, that's what that's for. Maintenance of equipment. We pay SSI over $28,000 a year for, um, to maintain our equipment, to service us for software, um, for support. So that's why that is that amount. Can I interrupt you for a second? You I sure just can. noticed this. You so sure I can. think we can actually greatly reduce that because you're right, we used to do that, but now we put it in our capital. So we actually have 28,000 for software support in our okay. capital. Okay. 
So what do you think if we knock that down? Because I still, you may have a printer or something that goes bad. Yeah. So I don't want to knock it down to zero, but no, I definitely think we fine. can back off that 30,000. Okay. Sorry, council, I just noticed that in these and numbers. Do, okay, do you have the new, I know we want, and then if we move to the building and you want another printer, is that in capital or is that mm -hmm. here? It's already right here. That's fine. Mm -hmm. So knock it down the, oh, okay. Uh, well, we could do um, two. <laughs> 2500 2500 yeah. comfortable with that? Yeah. That's okay. Fine. So that 30000 is going to go down to 2500 Okay. Um, and that is, again, um, prior to us doing the CIP this year, Colleen always took it out of that line item, but with an actual, <laughs> since it is a purchase of the software program that we have, the maintenance of it still gets added to our capital. So basically that number was added twice. It was added right there in the maintenance of equipment. And it's also built into the capital down there where it says 105,000. Well, it should say 79.5 for you guys now. Right. Yeah. Wouldn't it be better to take it down about three, four thousand? We save? took it up 25. You want to go three, four? What do you guys think? Because that's like if a printer breaks or a computer breaks, you know, anything that needs repaired and the finance, and that's probably a good idea to be honest with you. Finance department, Debbie's department takes on a lot of the burdens. He has a lot of that direct staff out of that office. So like the mail, the mail machine, all that little things really falls under Jeff, Debbie's budgetary uh, line items. So maybe putting it at the three or four thousand dollars just to give you a little bit of cushion just in case something goes down. And that doesn't mean you know we have to spend it all. It just mm -hmm. means oh, she has it if you need it. Yep. Right. It's a right. Term, sir. Yeah. right. Yep. I agree. So we're going with four thousand. That's really yes. four thousand. Is everything perfectly balanced out? I mean, if we add to something, do we have to take away from someplace else? Okay, that's a good question. Um, not necessarily. Um, what I do at the end of this is I compare to what the what our ending balance is, what the county says we're taking in, and then there's the total. And I have to make sure we do not go over that total in each fund. So I will see that at the end of the day. Um, Normally, I, as we're sitting here, I can judge by that, and we try to never appropriate, I use appropriate budget, all of our money that we have. As long as we don't budget all our money that we have, we can play with numbers like that, take in, take out. Um, but I, at the end of the day, will make sure that we do not budget more than what we and are allowed. Please correct me if I say this wrong, but basically, Mr. Grimm, when we have this budget set, she has the maximum amount by the auditor already. So as we take away, it's usually probably good, but if we add to it without taking something away, it might put her over that amount. Is right. that a yes. clear yes. explanation? Mm -hmm. It is. So we already have that, but so as long as we take away, we're not gonna go over that amount. So, so. revenues are a million five sixty and ex general fund expenses are Okay, you're getting ahead of yourself, and you're going to go say that we're spending more than what we're bringing in, which is a true, which is a true assessment. But we also have got a lot of investments this year with okay. the city building and then the planning department. And every year when you see that, we always underestimate our resources, our, our revenues, I'm sorry, and overestimate our expenses. So when you look at, and I'm glad you brought that up because it's a, it's a good thing. So when you look at the last page of the general fund, and we'll just skip to it real quick. So I think it's fantastic, Mr. Graham, you pointed that out. So every year, so we, it's the second to the bottom line. I don't know what these aren't numbered. So street know, construction starts it. here, and it's right here, and it says general fund ending balance. It is highlighted in yellow, so let me know when everyone's there. Yep. Yep. No, you're not there. You're not here over here, but I guess you're, you're too far in. So about right, about, right there it is. Right there, yep. There. Look at these numbers right here. So when you see like in 2019, so right below it says 2019 actual budget, right above that it says our ending balance is 1.1 million, okay? <clears throat> but every year it kind of looks like we're spending more, but by the time that year closes, we always bring in, usually bring in more than what we spend because we, that's how we do the budget, the overestimating and the underestimating. This year, I will be honest with you, we're not going to hit that, especially if we pay cash for that city building. We have the massive investment in the planning department. So this is probably one of the few years that we'll actually spend more than what we take in. So when you look at this history right here, and this 202 number should be black, it's not negative. So in 19, we actually, um, we, we brought in $202,000 more than what we spent. But when you looked at this 2019 budget when we were first, first doing it, we were actually 
projected to do more ex expenditures than bringing in. So we can use the beginning balance to cushion any. In oh yes, right. absolutely. Yes, yes. Okay. that beginning. Just, uh, mm -hmm. When you when you, I, I hate to say this terminology, but when you deficit spend, which means you spend more than what you take in, as long as you have carryovers, that's covering your expenditures. At some point, if you continue on that on that path of overspending, then your carryovers gone. So, but we all, you know, you've always kept a carryover. And we've, tried, we've not tried, spent mm -hmm. over um, what's come in in past years, but this particular year, 2020, if we spend the way uh, we're projected to spend for the city building and the different other items that are in here that will go over, uh, it's cutting into our carryover. So then the answer to my question is no. Hmm? You say that again? <laughs> the answer to my question is no, then. We don't have to take away from something else if we increase it. Oh, gotcha, no, no, no. gotcha. No, it, it, cool. Yeah, we'll mm -hmm. make sure. Thank you. Okay. Fantastic question. Sir. Okay. Awesome. So, um, but we'll, back to where we were, um, are we going to put three or four thousand? Four thousand. Four. Okay. Mm -hmm. Four thousand in that one. Uh, we talked about membership and dues. Those can, and that's for everybody, you know, um, like he said, sure, if, if people um, spend spend more than their share in their department sometimes, mm -hmm. it, everything comes back to the finance department. I take it out of there. So membership dues can, uh, I have to belong to certain things by the ORC. Um, we don't really get any publications in the office, but any kind of dues that we have to pay for the city comes out of there too, if it's not this particular department. Uh, moving down, office supplies. Hang on just a second, sure. I had one question, no, if you don't ahead. mind, back up to yep. I just wanted you to finish that section before I, uh, sure. the collected uh, tax services uh, for CCA, 75000 mm -hmm. So this is what they're charging, the, or ballpark of, in the area of where, what they may charge us. Yes. And if you look on, in 18, it was 88000 <clears throat> Last year was a little less, forty-nine. So I kind of went in between. Right. That's why I put is that ba Is their fee based solely on how much is collected? That's what I It's a percentage, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we pay for certain forms too. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For certain what? Certain forms that they print out that they need to print out. I think yeah. sometimes. I don't want to get into it here because it's not the meeting. But I'd like to have a discussion on that sometime. Well, here's the thing with that. I know exactly where it's going to go. But do we bring that back in house? No, I'm not saying that. Okay, gotcha. I just I just want to have an open talk about it. Okay. Nothing nothing horrible. Okay. And whenever you plan to do that, if you know, let me know ahead of time so I can have everything that's on their bill yeah. and how the everything across the board. So I have prepared to give you all mm -hmm. the answers you need. Thank you. Yeah, sure. So <laughs> office supplies is 7,500. Um, only reason why I did that is because office supplies, if we move, you know, we, we are working out of a doctor's office, so you know that we're, yeah. you know, some of us are just working on countertops. Mm -hmm. So I just kind of put a little more money in there. So that if we need anything particular, are you okay? Oh, forget it as a cop. Okay. <laughs> Operational supplies, that is anything from toilet paper to paper towels to whatever cleaning supplies we might need, any, anything like that for the city building. So that didn't, I didn't take it up much. I just kind of took it up a little bit. Small tools and minor equipment <clears throat> here. We're not sure. Once again, I know we put a couple of things in capital, but with minor equipment, I'm not sure what this, what we're going to be able to actually take from the city building to the new one, what we might need. Mm -hmm. Once again, it's there, but I don't intend on spending it if it's, if, if it's not a necessity. So um, if you want to lower any of those, those are fine. That's just kind of, I kind of, the top two kind of didn't just pad it a little bit from what we normally spend. The $5,000 was added just because of the new move if we do it. Um, capital outlay if has 79.5 in it, and I think I'll let Randy forward. talk about when we get to capital outlay because he knows what's on those. Yeah, are we there now? Yes, yeah, we're there. Okay. Awesome. Go. So we originally passed the CIP a couple months ago. We had allocated $105,000 for the finance CIP. Um, so when we do these CIPs, it's kind of our best guess effort. So. What I am proposing with council's uh, approval is um, reduce, we have a capital asset tracking. We got allocated $20,000 for that over the course of the next 
one, two, three, four, five. We are not going to need that. There's a software program I can get. It's all cloud-based. It's user-friendly. It's like $800 a year. Um, I don't know if that's the way I want to go, but I did reduce that capital asset from 20000 down to 5000 So we're reducing $15,000 off of that. So which one are you looking at? Yeah. It's the capital outlay for, so, but you don't have the capital improvement plan. So basically you're just looking at that raw number at the bottom of capital. 795? 75. Okay. It was, it was a hundred five thousand dollars. Gotcha. Oh. What I'm doing now is telling you the cuts we got to get down to that, the number that you see. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Sure. Um, furniture. We had thirty-five thousand dollars set aside for furniture for the new office building. We did slash that by ten thousand. Debbie's got a lot of staff to buy for. Um, but I think that we can do it on a better budget than $35,000. One of the places we do want to go look for furniture is having a going out of business sale to stop out we need 75% off certain pieces. So I think we'll find some savings there. We also had $3,000 in for a printer. And I do want to take that down to $2,500, even if it's only $500. Uh, that's negotiable to $500 difference. Just trying to is do the best with the. Yeah. Is this still in the capital? Mm -hmm. Outlay. Yeah. So we had the hundred five thousand. We took off sixteen thousand um, to get us to that seventy sixteen thousand five hundred. Get to seventy nine five. So we do see a reduction in that capital, mainly around the software program for capital assets and the furniture for the city building. So uh, we did see a reduction with that. Any questions or concerns with that? No. No. You good? I guess I got a question. Are we tied into our uh, supplier for our software in particular, or do we have the option to, let's say, if we find a better solution and a better price for a software? Are you, what software are you talking about? Any. Well, it's a great segue. Um, Debbie will be looking at, we, not to, I'll be very honest. A couple years ago, we made a big investment with new software program for the city, SSI VIP. And it was a big investment. Um, we paid $28,000 a year to maintain that software program. Prior to upgrading to the VIP, we paid around twenty-two to $23,000 a year to maintain that software. <clears throat> Debbie is very familiar with UAN. Um, so what she will be doing is, once we get past this year, is looking at bringing, possibly bringing UAN over. Even though we pay, we just had that big investment with it, if UAN charges us, depending on what the yearly maintenance fee is, say it's $5,000 a year, we are literally going to be saving the $23,000 a year based off the two maintenance things. And at some point in time, we'll get our money back. We just don't know if that's going to be the route we want to go. Um, the other software that I talked about, the capital asset tracking, there's so many of them out there. There's so many different companies. Do I have to go with No, I don't have to go with whoever I want. You know, you can do it where you bring it into your current software program, but I don't want to do that because they nickel and dime us and charge us for everything. You okay? Yeah, there's students coming in. I want to open the door for them. Just oh. got it. Mayor oh, just got it. He was doing? Okay. So um, we have some flexibility with that. But our current main software, we, we do. We made that a big investment in. But, you know, Debbie's going to be looking at maybe some alternatives. UAN is usually built for townships and villages. So I'm, I haven't seen UAN. I don't know if it's going to be best fit for the city as far as the capabilities of what it can do. Um, but it's always something to look at. But again, for me, that that decision to bring it to council is going to be how much their maintenance fee is. If they have a $20,000 year maintenance fee, it, right. we'll, we'll have to think about it then. I initially have, have spoken to UAN just to get some ballpark uh, figures with them. Um, they base your fee on your budget, the amount of your budget. So right now, at what the budget we have, uh, basically our fees would be approximately 6900 to $10,000 <coughs> a year, that's it. But they also supply the computers. They give you new computers every two years. They, may, you know, they maintain them. They also supply your printers that go with your computers. Um, so basically you're paying a fee on, um, that is also included in that amount of money, I said, uh, to maintain those pieces of equipment also. So. Um, if they can um if they can take on us as a city and i did ask them you know and they do take on cities of our size so 
Um, I'm kind of, uh, I, I'm looking forward to delving a little more into that because that is such a huge savings for us here. Um, you're talking $28,000 just for support a year. <coughs> That's a lot of money. Mm -hmm. and, and if we can reduce that, even though we spent a lot to get it, it will recoup that quickly. So it's a much, um, uh, SSI is created for any kind of accounting um, firm or any kind of business, so it's a much more complicated or more detailed system. The one thing I like about UAN, it's created by the state auditor's office. Mm -hmm. When you go to do something in that system, if it's against the ORC, it pops up and says, ah, oh, don't be doing that. It gives you, it helps you along the way, and, and it does all the uh, back work for you inside the software to what is supposed to be happening. So it's a much more simplified system. I like it because I've just used it for a long time. $28,000 a year or a month for support? Not a month, all for year, the year. year. All year. Are we using it that much? Oh, we using well, it for it, the support? Is that like, but, hi, I'm having a problem. Yes, that's we, oh, we can call right. them at any time. We put in a ticket, they call us back, uh, you know, as soon as we can. Every one of the ladies in the office use, utilize it if we don't know, if we don't know how to do something or if there's a problem, we do call them on a regular basis. Um, but that's still $28,000. But do we use it that extensively? Do we call contact support that much? No. Okay. No. Would, would you say that on the average I mean, we have two or three Tickets or a service call. I don't think it, they're charging. They're not charging us per call to do that. But, I, but a, I'm, yeah. I'm trying to get a yeah sure some kind of semblance of how call. much yeah. we've used. Oh. and it's not um, just about the ticket calls. It's about the back end maintenance they got to do. They they do the software. Yeah, software. It's yeah. it's not just pick up the phone. Yeah, That's not just what it's not. for. It's for the back end maintenance that they have to do to maintain the software. They back up our they do all kinds of stuff. Okay. So it's not just call mm -hmm. for help, but they do. But then they also charge you if they want to come up. So there's a la carte items per se that they'll get you for as well. Hopefully Mr. in the future we'll have good news. Question, mate, and answer. Gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> have a school, ladies. You don't. You don't have to lie. Uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> it was school, day. man. Like come on, <laughs> it's just school days trying to get done. <laughs> All right. So yeah, that's something Debbie is looking at because, like I said, I mean we can drop it down from twenty-eight thousand a year to ten thousand a year. We recoup that eighteen thousand over the course. It would take a couple of years to get it back, but um, if it's compatible with other things that we do, then I I would definitely present it to council. Good. And also, it sounds like it's more for a, a nonprofit, a government agency, compared to a company that does. Um, software for companies that make a profit, right? The SSI is, they do it for all businesses, oh, yeah. correct? The, the software, yes. Yes. Can be utilized. And I worked um, at Wright State, and ours was nonprofit. It was fund accounting. Is that what you do? Yes, fund accounting. Okay, oh, and yeah. so this other software might be geared more for that. And it sounds like it's a lot better as far as a maintenance fee. It's a Cadillac of a software program. A yeah, lot of cities yeah. use it. A lot. Oh, the SSI. A lot mm -hmm. of cities okay. do use it, but it is. I mean, it's the Cadillac, the Cadillac, and we've had some problems with it. And, I'm going to be very honest and, with you. We, and we have. you know, besides the the fees and the expense of SSI compared to other ones, when we had when we changed to the VIP program when SSI came in, what I think has happened. I think this program works. I think it's a good program. It works for a lot of cities. But when they brought it in here, it, the time of the year they brought it in and the fact that this company is growing by leaps and bounds, they didn't come in and make sure that this system worked for our operations. Mm -hmm. And I think they fell short with that piece of it. So that's where we're running into all the problems of trying to make sure that the water stuff's coming over right, that this is, I, I think that that piece of the puzzle fell short for them with us. And that's where a lot of our, we're, we're trying to learn because even when we go online to, to, for their instructional manual for VIP, it's not even updated for us to learn on our own just to, without calling them. So um, Vicki has found that, I found that, but it, it's, a good, it's a good software. It's a very expensive software, but it's a good one and it works for a lot of cities. I'm not saying it can't, but it, 
it's not working for us quite yet. Do you have something, Mr. Cobb? No, I want to run. Okay. You sure? You sure? Are all of our programs, or all of our departments on this software? No, that's the other problem. When, when you bought the software um, before I came, only uh, myself and payables and payroll came on to VIP. All the cash for the water, everything we bring in on that other side is still doing the old software from SSI, which is called eGov. So trying to put the two together is, has been, you know, a learning experience for us to try to make them mesh. But yes, it's just... Um, when Colleen yeah. presented, it was supposed to be a phased-in thing. We did a certain Colleen's first, and then we did some other things, and then year two, year three was going to be the subsequent ones. They're still compatible. They still work. It's not like yeah. they don't communicate because yeah. it was such a long-term expense. But when we had started having issues with it, we decided we're not going to make the investment on other stuff until we figure out is it a user problem or is it a system problem. And we're, you know, still getting through all this, but that's why we're starting to look at other options just because... Um, again, if we can save ourselves a yearly fee on that maintenance, then and something a little more have, user friendly, perhaps. Have we got a target date uh, that we could possibly outline? I mean, are we six months down the road, or are we four months? Or I, I don't. We don't have a pinpoint date. No, we don't even. I got to look at the current agreement that we have with SSI to see if we even can get out of it, getting can get out of it within X amount of years. So. It's there because we have to pay it for this year, but we're letting you know we are looking at different options. But to say it could, go, it could happen this year, we don't know. We don't know. Is there a penalty if we drop out of that? That's yeah. where, I don't think so, but that's where we have to do a contract review. Before we make that final call, we'll definitely do all that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. all right. But I'm happy to see that you guys are open to that's changing. Uh, we appreciate that, especially if it saves money, because we were trying to bounce around, you know, best ways to present it to council with the investment that we just did a couple of years ago. Um, but again, if we can save twenty, eighteen, and twenty thousand dollars a year on maintenance fees, it should recoup itself. Mm -hmm. um, and frustration yeah. with the staff. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So um, we'll definitely keep you posted with that. Anything we do with that will probably go in form of an, uh, a legislation piece to council. And when we do, if not, I'll definitely keep you posted though with that. Good. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Okay, <coughs> moving forward, the miscellaneous again, 1000 the refunds from the income tax, that's what we just, um, when people file their income tax returns and they deserve refunds, that's the number it is. So last year we did about 63.5, and I thought, well, let's make sure there's enough money in there to cover those. That takes us down to planning. Planning. And I think you want to take that. Or yes. Quick. You want to do it? Let Derek do it. You jump right in, Derek. So, well. Yeah, we're supposed to start with noise buttons today. Yes. I'll take control shortly. That's okay. fine. That's fine. Right. If you want to take the, at least the wage part, the first part, I can jump into the yellow. We're going to do a complete game of plan because actually we should have started with Howie's funds first today because Howie will have some meetings tomorrow, so we're not sure if Howie can come. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, hey, we stopped the general fund and finance. Planning. Planning. We're going to we'll stop the finance. Begin in planning. Yes, no worries. And then what we do is keep on flipping your page there. We're going to get through the general fund, and we're going to stop to where we have the street construction. So basically, when I was referencing Mr. Grimm's question about the ending fund balances, we're going to start pick up right there. And then Howie, Mr. Kitko. Parks. Oh, we're going to start with Parks first? Yes. Okay, now I'm confusing me even more. Go back to Parks. It's in with your general fund. So, no, it's all right. So you want to be, Parks is um, basically the one page after where we just left off. Okay. So planning, one more page, Mr. Cobb. Boom, parts. Right. Down there at the bottom. Bottom of the page. Yes, bottom, bottom of the bottom page. Of page. Everyone on, on there? Mm-hmm. We're good? Okay. Go ahead, Mr. Kitka. All right, under parks, you'll have your first uh, part of your wages and benefits. Of course, wages and benefits for this is uh, a portion of Greg, Salary, uh, Greg Slattery, our public works superintendent, and then seasonal employment, which... Uh, we do have a fairly basically a year-round seasonal, and then we bring on a second when we can keep somebody um, in to do park maintenance, mow, that type of thing. 
And of course, as they had said earlier, most of the French benefits are percentages of those wages. And you look at past history, we kind of uh, just, you know, stay right about that same amount. Uh, we did cushion a little bit because if we do a wage, uh, minimum wage increase or anything like that, that'll definitely cover that. Um, down to, there's really not much training travel or CDL testing out of parks, so we do not have a dedicated person to that. Uh, most of the other um, uh, departments will take care of those for those employees. Anything that's down under contractual, <laughs> most of your gas, your maintenance of facilities, infrastructure, equipment, those are things that a uh, shelter house that will pay for gas and electricity, um, lights that are in the parks, uh, maintenance of facilities can be anything that would be uh, cutting trees down, um, fixing some things at the shelter house, equipment could be fixing the mowers, anything that you would see a park person use or we would take care of the parks. Uh, it would, and then insurance and fleet, things like that, those are the insurance costs for our equipment that we have through our liability. Uh, membership dues and publications, that is, we do have a certified uh, pesticide um, person, and that is Greg Slattery. Government agencies are required to have that. And typically, this is where this portion is small and supplies and materials, office supplies, operational. You know, they're small. There's not much uh, that type of stuff that goes on in, in parks. Um, fuel and repair and maintenance supplies, small tools. Fuel for mowers, fuel for weed eaters, repair and maintain uh, the equipment, chainsaws, you know, help with, with tree cutting. Uh, capital outlay, and I just it went blank on that. <coughs> um, for capital outlay. It's the one I amended. I it is, yes. Um, it was at, uh, oh, never mind. Where are we at here? Mm -mm, 31.5, so we had made some adjustments. Um, and you might, can you help me out with the parks on what we, we did on those for capital outlay and what we could? Yeah, yeah, so yeah. we originally, you got it? Yeah, if I, uh, we, our utility cart and wood chipper that we initially put in the budget, we're gonna hold off on that uh, to be able to keep the few other things like the shelter house additions and upgrades, um, playground equipment, fall protection. Uh, Mr. Bridge works annually on uh, possible grant funding and, and needing some matching funds that will be utilized for that. And then um, park upgrades. You know, if we have a uh, barbecue grill that breaks, we'll upgrade that. Benches, things like that, we'll keep those. And then we will be replacing one of our 2001 or 2002 mowers this year uh, with a mower. We tried to buy it, was in last year's CIP, but the one that we wanted was not available, and that's why we're trying early in the year to get that available uh, mower that we want. So that takes our um, capital cost for the parks uh, with shelter house renovations down to 91500 And then, of course, as I stated before, miscellaneous, there's a catch-all for 1000 um, Do you have any questions with the uh, parks? And the parks is under the general fund, so its revenue comes from general fund revenues. In the CIP, we originally passed uh, a measure for $129,000. So when I was looking at that la last night, given the bu budget number I was looking at, you're making a big investment in your park. So we have $60,000 set aside for shelter house renovations and upgrades. You have $15,000 for playground equipment. Uh, again, $4,000 for park upgrades. So when you look at something that you can possibly put off to 2021 to help that bottom dollar line is a utility cart wood chipper. I spoke with Mr. Kiko about that. As long as we have the mower in there for next year, he will be suffice with that. Uh, that is just a recommendation. Council can choose to keep it in. Uh, but my recommendation, given the amount of massive investments we're doing in 2020, some things which should be able to put off if, if we can. Um, since it's not a necessarily operational functional needed thing at this point in time, I am recommending that be put off to 2021. And again, that is just the utility cart and wood chipper. If not, then your capital for that line is going to go back up to $129,000. Under that shelter house renovation, are we still anticipating the uh, parking lot renovations out there yep. in front in that circle and not the drive? Can I read you the definition on the CIP? It says shelter house upgrade addition, improved parking, acoustics, flooring, tables, chairs, kitchenette addition, technology updates, and or general aesthetics of the building in 2020. So that catches all. You know, depending on how we decide to lay that parking lot out, is will become through 
Okay, so there's an observation. You know, the but they, the and or or is in there. You know, so I know there's some debate about the kitchenette. You guys want to do a dish and I know there's some things we want to do acoustically that we had to put off from last year. So there's a lot going on with that shelter house upgrade, which is why it's 60. Mm -hmm. I know Parks and Renovation wanted to do that other parking lot off of Washington, but that's not included in this, am I correct? Um, I believe the asphalt area is still the rectangle area. I was on a, I was not understanding what she was referencing outside of that rectangular area. It's at the dead end of Deerfield at Washington. Oh, yeah. Is there something else outside of no, that? No, I think where she, yeah, because when she mentioned that, I was kind of, which I mean, it may have been there before, but the way I understood it, she was saying that there was that one square, what you're talking about, and made it sound like it, it drove up. And there used to be like a, a two ruts. That used to go up in there, but I'm not aware of any. There kind of is a cement pad on Washington that the food truck goes in there sometime, and that's what I think she wants to expand. But when we were talking, about, oh yeah, oh yeah. But I think when we we're talking about it, given how the funds were looking out, that we could gravel it for the first year or two, and then go and get barrier fencing to put around like a stump with wires that go through, it, just to keep cost down. It. So they Parks and Rec want to do that in the attempt that when the park is full of people, there'll be additional parking. So. Mm -hmm. What I would suggest council do is kind of see how they do this year, to be quite honest with you. What is, I mean, you're looking at maybe 10 spots out there. I don't know how much they can get from being out there. So what's, I mean, if you're going to spend $20,000 on a parking lot, is it worth spending $20,000 on a parking lot to get 10 additional spots? So well, I think the most, one of the most important things right off the bat is getting at least marked the, uh, the handicap parking. In the front of the main shop. Right, house. I mean, because that's, yes, that's. and that's what we have allocated right. for. Right. Yeah. I mean, because we don't have that marked at all. No, it's not. And we may be able to expand the parking just based off that. But I think their need was just for people walking in from the other side can have a place to go. Mm -hmm. The way I understood her, and correct me if I'm wrong. Oh, no, please go ahead. She wanted to build a <coughs> off of Washington and come up to the back towards the woods. For she parking. did. Yeah, you're right, because I like that area. for By the swing paper. set, the old yeah. set swings? Oh, okay, okay. That's what I interpret. You're that right. sounds more familiar. Because I'd, se I'd send over just a, a drawing one time just mm -hmm. to give you an idea what that would look like. I, mean, I don't know if it would work. But. Mm -hmm. but that's dangerous up there if you put parking up there with that playground or the... Um, uh, Oops. Yeah, yeah. the swings and that. That's too close. Yeah, somebody I could think. lose control of their car and hit somebody or... Yeah, I think because I was there, I said that'd be a good place to put additional picnic tables because it's kind of shaded. Yeah. <clears> there. Did we have anything in the CIP for parks as far as New Carlisle Park? Anything dedicated? I can't remember. Well, that's it's not dedicated to a particular park. Right, we have fine items for like playground. Right. Park. I just didn't know yeah. if we had set anything for exactly New Carlisle mm -hmm. Park. Okay. No. Mm -hmm. Is that the one by Dollar General? Yeah, behind Dollar General. Yeah. And that's probably one we're going to focus on right. more than likely this year. It's I need to figure out what that grant funding is looking like okay. on their end. Um, I know there's talk about we want to put what we call wayfinding markers on our bike path. So I don't know how much that's going to take of the grant money and what that is. You, they put something on that. It could be a sign. It could be whatever. And if you're walking, you get hurt. It's like a thing of a mile mark on a highway. Mm -hmm. Essentially what it is. So um, I still don't have that figured out because I haven't been able to touch base with Ashley, who's a grant coordinator for that. But, yeah, I think we've already discussed, besides the bike path that those go on, a lot of the improvements going on at that park. Cool. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did you say parks includes the cemetery? No. That's separate. That'll be one. That'll mm -hmm. be the uh, next to last one that I do. It's completely separate. Okay. I'll sit quiet. You're not in a hurry to get to the cemetery, are you? <laughs> 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 Any more questions not on parts? Really, no. <laughs> nope. If you flip that page and two more, that will take you to street construction, which will be down at the almost at the very bottom of the page. It will be fund two zero one. Everybody find it? Okay. Yeah, All right. Uh, street construction. Uh, 201 is our fund where we receive motor vehicle license revenue and state gasoline tax revenue. Uh, as you're aware, the uh, with the increased gas tax, we did see an increase in 19, and it did increase our estimated resources for 2020. So this was a huge uh, bonus for this 201 fund, and you'll see as we go down through some of the improvements that we were able to do with this additional uh, the beginning fund balance it was left from 2019 was uh, approximately 134,000, 
and including the new motor vehicle and state gasoline tax, you are sitting at about um, 342,922. Where are you reading that, Howie? Making sure I'm very on Very bottom line. Right at the very bottom line of the street construction. Where it says an intergovernmental, off to the right of that. Okay, oh, you're, yeah. you're right. Okay, sorry. <laughs> that's, that's okay. Go ahead and flip your page. Now we go. And then outside of miscellaneous receipts, your total construction revenue with that carryover will be 343422 um, So with those revenues, we are looking to spend those with the next section. And which is your wages and benefits. Wages for this is four people, uh, which is Greg Slattery, Ron Wright, Dave Coleman, and Tracy Shopshire, which are the employees. And then you have your overtime wages, and then according to their benefits. Uh, typically, you'll see the, the one that really sticks out is your medical insurance. We plan for family plans for all our employees, uh, just in case all the hires that we have have that. Um, it is a lot of legislation and changes to adjust if we have four singles and then all of a sudden we get four families. So we just kind of keep that up there. So your wages and benefits are coming uh, in at $225,850. Uh, training travel, you got 1000 CDL testing. This is where the four employees, those four, if they're due for CDL testing that year or they're taking additional endorsements, that's where those that funds will be expended. Uh, the next one's your contractual, gas, communications, maintenance of your facility, maintenance of equipment, your insurance for those vehicles. Um, for those, it's the, the Quonset Hut. That's really our only street uh, building that we pay for gas electric services, <coughs> communications, cell phone, um, landline, uh, any kind of imp uh, goes towards that line item. Facilities, infrastructure, and equipment. Uh, basically, these three line items have always been really small um, in the past years and have been hesitant to spend those because of the ending fund balance. This year, we really want to put a lot more to try and, not a lot more, but keep the facilities up and not falling apart because you know the HUD is old. Uh, the goal would be someday to have a, uh, a new style, uh, rent, just another building to get into. Infrastructure and equipment, uh, we're, well, again, we're going to put a little bit more money into our existing equipment, um, just try to keep the things we got um, uh, and bring those back up to a, uh, a, a, in, into a path that is more useful for us and keep those items uh, in great shape. And then you move down to the next items of materials <laughs> and supplies. These are office supplies, operational supplies, uniforms. Each of uh, employee, the four, each get $500 in uh, annual uniform allowance. Salt, that is the salt that we budget for every year for winter. Between streets and state highway is where we get all our salt funding. Um, this year will be a good one. Mild winter, when we get a couple mild winters, we're able to conserve some of that, that funds and expend those at a later time when we get a rough winter. The next line item, if you look to the right, we have 45,000 um, sit there this year. If you look to the right, there was really nothing spent in the last three years. It's because the street levy paid solely for all road work repair. Well, because the gas tax only goes into these two funds, we are currently looking um, to put $45,000 out of this fund, add it to the street levy to increase that uh, estimate for road repairs that I can do this year in 2020. And then we have fuel, 5,000, repair and maintenance supply, small tools. Uh, capital outlay this year would, um, would be your wood chipper, uh, street painting equipment, snow plow, and start looking to get our bucket truck replaced. That thing has been a dandy for us, but it is starting to get really aged. Um, and the capital outlay is now down to 39,000 for that. Let me ask you to chime in here real quick. Absolutely. We am proposing taking the wood chipper out of park, so that means I can take it out of that too and put it off to 2021? Yes, now that you brought that up, yeah, because that's a shared, fun, that's yeah, a shared right, piece of equipment, so yes. I apologize for missing that earlier. Oh, I missed it too, but thank you. And then um, the backhoe was paid off in 2019. That is why you will not see anything there, uh, as in you did previous years, and in your miscellaneous. So your construction expenses for that fund are $374,350. $374, $350. Uh, 
which will leave us in, uh, on an estimated... Uh, oh, I'm sorry. I'm taking off that third. Oh, you're going to take it off now? Yeah, okay. Yeah, just so they have a number. And if you flip to the next page... Um, Three hundred fifty-six thousand eight hundred fifty. Three hundred fifty-six thousand eight hundred fifty. Okay, let me write that down. So that would be a total street construction expense. And what did we take off? The wood chipper. Wood chipper. Since we're holding off a year for the parks, it was a dual purchase. Okay. Say it one more time. The wood chipper. No, I mean. Oh, so. be, oh I'm sorry. Three hundred fifty-six thousand dollars, eight hundred and fifty. Thank you. Is council okay with the uh, amendments to the CIP because we're going to have to follow that up with legislation. So I'd rather know now if you guys are having any issues with it rather than my bring the legislation to you and then we have issues with it. Does anyone have any, uh, any concern by putting that wood chipper off until 2021? That would be... Will, will the one we've got hold till 21? We baby it, so we try... <laughs> but there, there are times we, when we know we get into the heavy work, we go rent one. Okay, that's yes. that was my next suggestion. Yes. And the worst case scenario is it breaks down. We can always reopen it back up to put it back in if needed. If we need to, I just don't want to go through all the amendments and then have us yeah. have to do it again because we, it's not right. And we, and we did not did we move the beet juice situation over to twenty one? I don't maybe I don't think that's even in there at all. We took it out of. We took it out, but I don't think I want to put it back in. So if that's something you guys want to do, we'll have to either allocate that for 2021. We were right around what I think 31,000 to outfit trucks. I think 31 to 35 was about yeah. where we talked about. Mm -hmm. But I, I know we took it out year a year ago, but no one brought it back up in the CIPs we just right. had, right? All right. So if that's something we want to talk about, we can do it. But it's not going to be until next year winter anyway. So see, see what I'm saying? Because we're about done with this year. Um, and there's just an article. I actually thought of you. There's an article. Well, the there's an article, and there's there's quite a bit of uh, controversy about how much can be saved. But you've got Green County, I think that is the yeah. article that we were talking about, has been using that for quite a while, and there is a substantial savings. Again, with the light winter we had, we're saving quite a bit on the salt, mm -hmm. but who knows what next year is going to bring. I can give you an, uh, a little bit of update. I have spoke with Clark County, who uses a little bit. They call it beet heat, so it's not the beet juice. Right. Um, they do about 10, 10 to 15% addition, but their road miles are great. So that increases their savings for all the county roads that they do. Um, we salt mainly on the beginning intersections and main drags. We let the traffic track that stuff through where we used to lay that salt down nonstop. Um, does it make us have blacktop at the surface it, it, right after the snowfall? No, it doesn't. But it makes our intersections and main drags, main thoroughfares all clean, except for some of those straight stretches. So I asked him about how much we could use, and I, I met with the guy with the B Heat Edition. And he goes, you know, you can add it in there, but you need a separate barn for it because you, you tumble it and then it sits by itself and you utilize it when your temperatures obviously are below 20 or below teens. You, ne you don't use it whenever you're in that 20 to um, up to 32 degrees. So how often would we use it? Um, Not often. It, it's that for us, it could potentially sit there for a while. And the problem we have with salt is it does get clumpy. Um, with us, even when it's under cover, it gets clumpy due to the humidity. Um, we don't get a good rotation on this winter where we don't use much. That salt will sit in that barn for over two years. So that's what we dread. And then we have to go in there and bust this stuff up with a backhoe. And then we have busted an auger before in a salt spreader wow. uh, with this. So, But it's definitely something we've been looking at. Um, but we definitely would have to do that, the application, and then another probably small structure to house it or tarp it. What does council want us? What, how would the council like us to do with that? Well, I think this is a, a situation that somewhere along the line, yes, it should be put back in. Now, whether we do it 21 or whatever, but I think sooner or later we're going to go to it. I think so too, and I think now I'm thinking about this. I know we had took it out, and I think we had said, "Hey, the gas tax is coming in. Let's see all that receipts for a year." And I thought we had planned on bringing it back and looking at it again in 2021. 
Excuse me, but I'd like to look at beet heat first before we do beet juice, because beet juice is all the extra equipment. If we can do beet heat, it's an additive to salt um, and in the barn. It's granular. And, and again, that's, you know, your situation because that, to me, is an operational. So that may not take capital. It may just be bumping the line item of salt to compensate for that, maybe that extra $1,000 worth of additive to that. And I'll double check that. Okay. So we are we putting any money aside for it in 2020? I think we need to. I think we need to. Do you want to add a thousand to? Because we weren't. We're probably not going to use much of this. We're not going to use any of this in this winter. No. So it's all going to be going for next December only. So I think we'll be good. No, it wouldn't be capital. It'd just be, it'd be just adding to the salt line item. Oh, just another thousand dollars for salt. Yeah, there's no special equipment. So how does that work? I'm sorry, I was looking at pool yeah. numbers, but <coughs> so that just gets sprayed into our existing salt bin. It comes in. It comes in granular. Like they may bring a one dump truck of granular stuff. We mix it and we we'll have to store it separate from our other salt. So it's a dry product. It's, it's a, dry, a dry product. Oh, okay. Yeah, unlike what they were requesting with beet juice, which is the liquid additive sprayed onto the salt at discharge. Do you think it'd be over the course of the year over $2,100 by any unforeseen anything? Because if it is, then we can, I'll have to put it into the capital, which is fine. It's there. It's in the capital. It's, it's already accounted for. Well, it'd be, we could just do it with the salt because the salt we spend over 10000 a year in, in, uh, sorry, in, in salt. So we would just... The vendor before they deliver the salt just have them bring um, the extra granular with it. Where are you staying? Where are you storing the granular at? It's in the salt barn. The the salt that we get now, mm -hmm. we would just be having them send over a couple bags of uh, or a truckload of that stuff. I don't know if it's specific, but it would be just be like getting a delivery of salt. I, I believe is an additive, not like a capital capital expense. It's a disposable um, item. Right, but you, our capital asset plan is more than just that. So I'll look at it, see where it needs to go, and then we'll get with everyone. So you can just go like a line on, he says, or worst comes case scenario, <coughs> we amend the CIP, which I got to do anyway, and put it in there as well. So we'll figure that out. Yeah. Give me just a second. Ladies, just so you know, that we're going to, I don't know if you know, we're going to go till six. We'll probably take a break at four, but if you need to leave anytime before, just raise your hand and we'll sign your card so you guys can go. So. <coughs> Mr. Kiko, can I ask you a question? Absolutely. And um, the building down there behind the waterworks or behind the old doctor's office. Yes. Has anybody looked at that roof that's leaking and demolishing part of that building? Um, when uh, you guys get to lands and buildings, uh, Mr. Bridge will have that, and it is in the it is in the approved capital improvement plan that you guys approved. Okay. <coughs> okay, I'm good. Sorry. That's okay. Any more questions on street construction? Uh, the goal before I leave that is because we, I think we'll be able to carry ending fund balances, we'll probably start putting money back for new equipment uh, to replace some of the older older stuff now that's coming in there. Like what kind of equipment? You're oh, thinking? like our, our other trucks, like mainline plow stuff that, yeah. Uh, next page is uh, State Highway. Oh, I'm sorry, it, it, you, we were already on that same page, so um, if everybody's at State Highway, that is where we receive the other portion of our motor vehicle license and state gasoline tax. So a portion goes to street construction, a portion goes to State Highway. This is a very small portion, and this is to maintain our state highways. We have two, 235, excuse me, and 571. And so basically the only expenses we do here is salt, because we salt the roads. And then we put a little bit um, in maintenance of infrastructure, maintenance of equipment. Uh, if we got to go in Dura Patch, we may take a little bit out of state highway to cover those costs because it is state highway um, stuff. We don't really spend a whole lot out of it that we really that that needs to be done. However, in 2023, 2024, we will be paying 20% of the 235 resurfacing project. Um, that will be coming in and I the last time it was done is when the Heritage of Flight Festival first came back out the Main Street So what year was that? Uh, oh five. 
So it, 05, it'll be 2023 when we get that same uh, resurface done. That's when we're going to do that? Mm -hmm. Just on that real quick, I don't want to hold you up. Is the, the street lighting on Main Street, like the decorative lights, is that part of this fund or is that the, the lights itself is a different fund? That's that's under the street light assessment. Okay. Are you, you talking just the ones that are already up? Right. A street lighting assessment. Okay. Yep. Any questions with the state highway? We're estimating about 122 to be left over, but again, I have to keep that up there because I will probably be using 90% of that for our 20% share of that project coming up. How are you on that uh, catch basin repair? Is that going to become coming due this year for those catch basins that you have marked on Main Street? Um, a couple, a uh, couple are being done with the traffic signal project, and then a couple are, done, are are in there. Yeah, for this year, those will be uh, levy because it's storm. Okay. But yeah, they're accounted for. Okay. Yep. Excuse me. We good with that? Uh, state permissive tax, uh, which is the next page at the top. That is your fund 203. We receive vehicle permissive tax of uh, an estimated 62,000. Uh, basically, this pays uh, currently either a portion or a majority of a portion of Ron Wright's wages and his benefits. And we kind of take that down to where we utilize that as much as possible for labor. You said this catch basin were in the street levy? Yeah, under um, asphalt aggregate. Okay, yeah. that needs to go into, are they over $2,100 to fix? Various materials. Um, the project itself for each one, is it over 2100 I can't remember what you said it was. Oh, I think one was like 18 one was 23 That has to be moved to the capital, but it's fine. Our capital, it's not, anytime you repair something, it still can go for a capital. Yeah, I'll get with you after yeah, the... Gotcha. I just want to make sure we have it right. Um, so does anybody have any question with permissive? We kind of keep a, a, a low balance there. We kind of just try to utilize it up, like I said, of all the labor. And then moving on, we have street levy. Uh, this is the um, estimated revenues of... 133,297 and this is uh, real estate taxes and homestead rollback and this is based on the citizens who passed the um, street levy for the city of New Carlisle. So that's what you're projecting this year for the street levy to, to bring in 133? Yeah, we're projecting one yeah, 133,000. Okay. And we have a, um, some revenue that can or carry over from this last year. Go on the next page. Oh, there it is. There it is. Yeah, we brought some money forward of seventy-one thousand. So basically, it is a um, in our expenditures. What we're really going to put towards road resurfacing project is one hundred sixty thousand. Uh, it's going to leave our ending fund balance at about twenty. I don't like to take that down near zero. Only the fact it is, you know, you never know when something's going to pop up on a street. We need to do a major repair mm -hmm. uh, with that. So that will be the 160 plus the 45 will be what we take out to go get the road estimates and combine those to do like we've been doing the last couple of years. And then the 20,000 under asphalt, concrete, and aggregate, that's just our in-house work that we do. Or if we need to get a contractor to do some uh, work that we can't perform. Oh, let me ask you, Mr. Kick, I'm sorry. Is this any of this um, going to cover any curb work up on Main? Uh, all the, the curb that is um, bad up on Main is under the property owner's responsibility to do that. Okay. Um, Okay, thank you. On that Main Street improvement, are we going to go back down around What a Dog and redo that section down there that was just recently done? Yeah, it's funny that that lasted 15 years the first time, and then this time we do have a major what they call pumping issue up underneath. Um, we got water pushing real bad now. Um, that will be redone in 2023, but we are thinking about doing some concrete work down there 
this year and digging it out and just fixing a couple of those potholed areas with concrete. Would it not be and make more logical sense to go down there and on the western edge of that concrete, dig down and rebuild concrete up like a concrete wall so when that water hits, it's diverted rather than going under that pavement? Um, you talking about water that runs uh, off of Water Dog? Yeah. Um, it just runs over and then runs across the road. It, nothing really gets under there. It's everything's coming up from underneath. Like from because we have slotted drains on Hillcrest and um, uh, Tal Schroyer, so those roads do not enter. But you're you're thinking that the water is not getting underneath that pavement that's causing our problem. It's down underneath the concrete. Well, yes. Yeah. So, like, maybe when when the creek rises. No. No, it's 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 regular groundwater. There's some storm. I mean, yeah. you, there'll be a little bit, but there's all hill right there. Okay. And honestly, the concrete is bad. That whole area needs um, ripped out. Yeah. I guess my concern is number one: if if we don't go in there and do it right. We're going to be repairing that every so often. We're going underneath the asphalt this time and redoing the concrete base. We'd like to get rid of it, honestly, get rid of that concrete base because it does not drain water. 304s drain water. And that's our problem. I would love to redo all of 235 and get that base out, but that is just so expensive of the city. We don't just pay 20% of that. They, we pay 20% of a resurface. But if we need anything underneath that rebuilt or anything like that, that's all comes on the city for full cost. But 2023 is for the resurface of Main For just Street. the resurface. Now, I'm assuming when that day comes, there'll probably be some spot work that you're going to have done, right? Yes. Have you done any kind of test borings down there to see what you got base-wise? Oh, we've had it dug up. We, it's, it's 12 inches thick of just rotted uh, concrete. We don't need to yeah, go what's below. below the concrete? Below the concrete mm -hmm. pit run. Pit run. About the only way you're going to get rid of that on the hillside, you're going to have to build a barrier on the uh, east side of the road, run draining tile through there. You got pit run underneath that concrete. You're still going to have the problem of water coming off the hillside. Yeah, it runs it right across Water Dogs parking lot, and then runs through because they'll always have approaches. So if we decide to try and put slotted drains, we could try that approach, but there's, you can't put a wall because they have almost, it's almost wide open for their um, ingress, egress points for what a dog. Is that where you're talking about putting a wall up? Well, through that area between the river or the creek or whatever you want to mm -hmm. call it, up to the first house there. And that's where the biggest part of the problem is, correct? Well, yeah, but I think I think the wall needs to be on the west side of the road between what a dog and the road in order to divert that water. Well, if you put a drain tile in there, uh, several sections of it, put your wall on the east side and bring the drain tile out, that'll take the water out. I can look and talk with the owners of Water Dog and see how much right of way clearance we have because the anything we do has to stay inside the right of way. And if we got enough room, we might be able to put a slotted drain. There's just not enough room for a wall because I think only right in that part where their building is is raised curb. Everything is ingress and egress points, so we can't block their approaches. So we might be able to do slotted drains that's like at the foot of um, Tal Schroyer and Hillcrest, and that way it'll run from the parking lot and hopefully catch that slotted drain. I cannot offer any value to me. Sure, so, me either. You know, I was just like, you lost me a pit run, so have fun with that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I had a lingo. I well, put, I, I, knows what I'm talking about. I know, that's why you guys I, are doing your lingo together. But what right? I'm saying is, if we put the, if you can classify for a water problem, intimate domain, where you can't put a wall on the outside, you'd have to go through uh, Are you talking by the bridge side or in front? Because our, our oh, water. Okay, you got water dog right here. 
235 here. If you come on the other side of 235 here, on the east side, put your retaining wall. Oh, yeah, we don't have a problem with water coming that direction. We have water coming from the west. Coming that's what I say. That's where you put your drain tile underneath there, run from west to east, back out towards the creek. Yeah, we already have storm under there. We have storm that runs underneath there already. But something's not working, though. It, it, it's, it, there's water pumping outside of the storm, too. You're going, you're going to find out once you take concrete out, you've got more problems. Yeah, we've been under there. We've seen it already. Already. Um, moving on. Moving on. Any other questions with Levy? All right. <laughs> I had a Lego set when I was a kid. <laughs> <laughs> I will count pages here to get you guys the next one. So it's four. <laughs> Kind of Lego set as a kid. On break, let's uh, when we take a little break, let's go through and everyone number their packet. Because yes, I'm sorry. No, no, it's okay. It just so it's what? hard to get Excel. She has not. Oh yeah, no. And I was it's planning to trying pages. to get all on one page. After the one we were on. Yep, seven pages. You'll see at the bottom be water operating. Are you counting the page we were on. Is one. Yes. <laughs> Let's keep on going until you see Twin Creeks infrastructure bond twice, and then you need to see water operating. Water operating. Yep, I see it. All right, this is our water oper water department, and we are carrying forward from tw uh, from 2019 a beginning fund balance of $384,265. And we are estimating $925,000 in water consumer charges. That is what everyone is billed for on their, on their usage at their residence or commercial business. Water miscellaneous receipts, um, that, that's just, it's a catch-all for anything. It could be late fees, it could be any number of those. Uh, so our total operating revenue for the year will be one million, no, I'm sorry, one million, one hundred sixty-seven thousand, eight hundred eighty-nine. So out of that, what we're looking to spend is there's w uh, wages and fringe benefits. Uh, it is a three-person department. Currently, um, it is Bob Hoke, our water superintendent, Ryan Williams, our operator, and soon to be, don't really want it to happen, but it's happening, uh, Derek Hutchinson, which uh, he will be replaced um, by another individual. Uh, so their wages are at 215,000. With overtime, we average about seven. And their overtime consists of they're required to do weekend duties on Saturday and Sunday um, and any kind of water main breaks. So this department will see a higher than um, normal compared to other departments on overtime wages. I'm sorry. He talked to himself. <laughs> <laughs> um, the other one that kind of stands out is your medical insurance. Again, for three people, we put 80000 in. We only spent 36 the last year. Um, we currently have, you know, some that do not take our insurance, and then in you know a, a couple singles. So it really keeps it low. But we have to uh, be ready for full full time with full insurance needs. So that takes our total personal services to 350,500. Uh, training, travel, and transportation. Um, water department personnel are required to have training. They're required to have a operators, uh, Ohio EPA certified operators license. And again, they are also CDL tested. So um, if they need to get any endorsements, renewals, that covers that. Uh, gas electric service. This is basically the water treatment facility. Um, we average 45,000 for gas and electric service. So when you look at that, it's high, but it does run a lot of pumps. And the pumps don't run 24 seven, but the plant does. So those kick on and off. Where we do put a lot of money is in a couple of items below of maintenance of facilities, maintenance of infrastructure, and maintenance of equipment. So this year, just in those three light items, we are looking to put in $80,000 in maintenance. Um, <coughs> and that could be anything to, you know, grease, lube, um, small motors, pumps, you know, you name it. Try to keep things um, up to par and get their life expectancy um, out past where they're supposed to be or where, where we'd like to, to save some money down the road. Um, membership dues and publications, in this one it is typically larger because our annual water license to operate is a little over $4,000.
That's what the EPA charges, charges us to operate. Um, we also have just joined a couple organizations such as Ohio Rural Water, and those companies help us come in, give us some um, on-the-job training with things that we typically don't deal with. Um, there is a gentleman just works with him. He's been around for 40 some years and if we have a kind of a hiccup He comes in and helps us out. That's what those benefits are from some of those um, dues that we pay Moving on down to the next section your office supplies operational supplies Uniforms with three people um, that would be 1500 but we, since we are changing out personnel We're gonna be hiring a new person. So we're gonna have an additional 500. So that's why we budgeted 2000 Salt. This is a big one. Uh, this is what we use to soften your uh, water. We did bump it up because with the 2020, the new um, per ton salt rate is $130.41. It, it, we budget enough because if we do get into some main breaks that we can't, not that we can't get to, can't find or um, usage goes up, we have to account for that treatment. But well, as you can see, we really tried it like last year, 45,000. We are very adamant at uh, getting a leak detection company to come in um, along with the crews and listen to hydrants on a regular basis so we're not wasting water. Um, asphalt, concrete, and aggregate. These are basically after we have a main break, somebody's got to pay for it to put the asphalt back in. So the water department, if, it, if their cause of the asphalt work is the water main break, they, re they fix that. Um, fuel repair and maintenance supplies, small tools. Um, those go into basically doing our everyday um, jobs. Equipment for water, um, it usually is not cheap. Uh, capital outlay. Um, we are going to be making, uh, or Mr. Bridge is going to be a, um, requesting with council an adjustment of a CIP. In capital outlay, we have. Apologize. 2019 started with the rehab of our high service pump building. We finished it out and got the rest of our materials um, this year to finish that out. They will be starting out here within the next week or two. Uh, that will bring that old 50-some building, as I spoke at council the night, back up. Um, hydraulic study, tower controls for SCARF, and start putting money away for valve replacement, water main replacement. Um, we may not specifically spend uh, $10,000 on water line replacement, but we need to keep accounting for that. So when we've got to do a water line replacement, it's $500,000, you know, we'll be saving up some money to be able to go after OPWC funds to help, you know, hopefully pay for 50% of our costs with some grant funds. Um, and then we still will pay um, the contractor who did our tower painting the $115,288 payment. In the CIP also has a $28,875 repayment to the general fund. As you remember, the general fund had paid the first year's payment for that tower program. Because the water department did pretty well this last year, um, and we still have a rate increase that just went into effect, and we have another one going in, and these last two are smaller, um, we are requesting that we go ahead and <coughs> take our capital up to 310000 up from the 223 to repay the general fund that full balance of that um, repayment. So we'll, we'll get it back. Yeah, he's all super happy. Um, 2022 was supposed to be the last year for repayment, but we feel it is good for us to do this, get it back into the general fund. As one, it does help the general fund. It can be used for anything. But if something else comes down the, the pipe, as in this case, I can approach Mr. Bridge and say, hey, you know, I, I got some ideas. I might want to do another loan. I might want to change some things up and be our own self-sufficient mm -hmm. um, entity. So that is the one big positive we have with that. And with our debt service, um, our water meter payment is $15,501 um, per year. The Tecumseh YMCA extension that went in in 2004 that will be done in 2024. That is $7,200 a year. And then the OWDA loan for the new water plant, that is $217,250 um, per year. That will also be paid off in 2026. Um, so with those all being um, added up, our total operating revenue would be 1167 
our expenditures, um, I'm sorry, my, our revenues, I am, anyway, our ending fund balance will be about 162,000. After repayment, after fixing, refurbishing this high service pump and um, the, the dreaded um, Adams Tower discussion stuff. So we are, we are sitting now with a reserve fund. It's not, we, we need an annual amount of reserve. So our budget averages eight to 900,000. I want to see that reserve get to 800, 900,000 um, for when things start to break down. It's come and up. It's come up so, though. So I'll yeah I'll I'll entertain any questions. It's a very complex enterprise fund. It's supposed to be sole uh, source with its own income and its own expenditures without help. But you know as as you can see we've gotten help in the past. Is there any questions uh, with anything in the water department? Do we have a ballpark idea of what it will take to take the Adams Tower down if we decide? Um, yes, the companies that we have, and it's been a couple years, they would rate around 30000 to take it down because they go scrap. They get the scrap money off of it. Exactly, yeah. When the HGTV thing, they're going to fix the water tower for us. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> That's when? Yeah. Seth. Should be this summer. <laughs> it's a win. No. Positive. So when? You're telling me. Uh, I'm the king of being positive. Yeah. yeah. Right okay. here, this guy. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> now we know and full well how old this city is. What is our plans down the road for some of the water main replacement? Um, right now, we don't have any immediate concerns. However, we, as you can see, we're putting money back for that time when it does come for that. Um, when you get a main break or five main breaks within a one block section within a really short amount of time, that's when you'll replace that section. So, but the, nothing is on our radar currently, immediately, that we need to go dig up this summer and replace like all the Church Street water main. Knowing full well the age of some of the uh, mains in the older section of town, I would assume it's probably going to be sooner than later that we're probably going to have to be replacing some of those. We are into more valve replacement is more of our concern. We are fortunate that we sit in pit run. Um, it does, it shifts. But without that clay packing on there, you get a lot more deterioration, and we have a lot of ductile iron in our system, which is the new age. It, it does last much longer. Uh, and the cast iron that we do have in our system is in, is in pretty good shape for being from the 50s. Um, we don't have what I would consider um, the old section of town, which is some of the old mains from the 30s. Uh, we've been pretty fortunate with it. But we know sometime, you know, it, 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 could, it could start. But our ground has been pretty stable. There's not a, a lot of electrolysis, and for that, that is just a lot of current that flows through that corrodes copper and corrodes uh, steel underground. Well, that one section on Zimmerman, what have we had? Three main breaks in that one block area just up from my place? Yeah, just yeah, a little over, yeah, it's like a block and a half. And I would have thought that that area would have been fairly stable. Yeah, what the problem with that one is, is that one was installed at an angle due to the hill on the, the way that grades up on Edgebrook. Because where we did the one by, um, shoot, by that manhole was almost eight and a half foot deep. Wow. And our typical water main is not that deep. And you go up only half a block and you're at three foot, <laughs> three and a half feet. So... Back to you, sir. All right, thank you. Um, moving on to wastewater. <coughs> this, this is the uh, this is our elephant that I'm currently working on. That's in the room. Uh, revenues. Uh, 
came in lower um, than expected last year. And uh, we feel that a lot of conservation had taken place. And we think that's one of the contributing factors. You're meaning HE washer dryers? Yes. Toilets? Yeah, a, a, lot, a lot of that stuff. Water is not seen because we had to increase rates to compensate for that. Right. Where sewer, the rate increase ended in 2017, and now we're really seeing a hit again. Uh, so with those re revenues, and um, where you see water miscellaneous receipts of 163500 below there, that is the loan proceeds for the primary clarifier that has to be receipted. Later on, we'll get to where that will be expended. Um, so our total revenues for the year are estimated to be 959500 If you turn to pages two expenses, this is a four, uh, there's four cr uh, member crew with a superintendent and three operators. And their wages are at 270, 270000 with overtime wages at ten. Um, with their French benefits, obviously um, with four Four personnel and possibly four families. That's one hundred thirty thousand dollars, you know, in medical benefits. So their wages and benefits are at four hundred seventy-four thousand uh, estimated for the year. Same thing: train, training, travel, transportation. They are certified operators through the Ohio EPA and are required to maintain those with CEUs. Uh, CDL testing. Same thing. They're required to have CDLs. Um, under contractual. Uh, gas and electric, it's 115000 um, They do have a lot of pumps, motors, and things that run. We have a blower that feeds air to numerous pieces of equipment. Um, so that's our big expense there. Maintenance of facilities and sludge hauling, maintenance of infrastructure, maintenance of equipment. This is $109,000, and we've been doing this for the last five years that we have put into that wastewater plant, not counting the projects. So we put a lot of money into maintenance to keep, uh, to keep extending the life expectancy of the current equipment. But we do know, as we are starting to see now, that we're going to have to start being, not just maintenance is going to keep us going, it's almost going to be time to replace. So our contractual is at $258,250. And then um, we get down to materials and supplies. Biggest one is chemicals. Lots of chemicals. We got chlorine. Um, we do, uh, there's just, there's all, I don't know of all the chemicals that are involved in treatment of wastewater, but there's a lot. Um, fuel repair and maintenance supplies, you know, with those, those are just things that they utilize on a daily basis um, that keeps that operation going. Capital outlay. And the capital outlay is $160,000 for the primary clarifier. The current, the current construction cost is 149. If that goes down to 149, obviously our revenues will go down to 149 uh, with that. There is in the capital currently a van utility crane truck of 40,000, which would put the total combined capital at 200,000. In your um, capital outlay packet, you'll notice it says 362. Because a project is carrying over from 2019, this is also the expense account for that influent building upgrade project and the primary clarifier. So we have to take into account what we're paying for for the finish of that influent project and what um, the clarifier project will be spent out there also. And then our debt service, OWDA meter project, this is the other 50% for the water meters and the software was 15501 And on the next page, the Tecumseh the YMCA, there was also sewer extended. Hey, Howie. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just wanted to ask you something real quick. I know it technically doesn't have, can those new meters that we, well, not new, but the ones that were put in a few years ago, can those things be cheated? Hmm. I don't think there's a possibility because we get alerts of that. Okay. So if, let's say if someone takes one out and puts it backwards, we get an immediate notification of reverse flow. Really? Yes. Okay. Yep. I was just curious. Yep. Sorry. Thank you. Yep. And they're all solid state. So the old days of being able to drill a hole and, and well, I've stop always it. heard like putting magnets on them or That's something. That's all. It's a thing of the past. Really? But yes, that was a possibility. Okay. Turn yep. yours back around. Yeah. 
No, I just, <laughs> and I was wondering, I mean, if that was a possibility of, of losing money that way, you know, revenue from water. So, um, Repairing of leaks is a revenue loss, too. Okay. So what we do for that is a revenue loss. Okay. Um, OPWC loan for the Tecumseh YMCA, again, that was sewer extended. That will be paid off in 2024. That's $6,879. The OPWC loan, wastewater treatment plan improvement, that was the OPWC zero interest loan for um, the added filters that we did in 2012, uh, the sludge press, and a few of those items that were put in during that project. And then the sewer jet, 23,030. This is the last year that will be paid off at the, um, well, that will be paid off this year. So our current debt service is $78,324. With our total wastewater operating expenses uh, tallying $1,211,824. Well, with our bringing the money we brought forward from last year, because uh, we had some loan proceeds um, that came in at the end of the year, was $261,309. Um, we add the um, other water wastewater operating revenues, and you take out the expenses. We are projected... Uh, to end this year at $8,984 and 75 cents. Um, I am not comfortable with that at all. I, and as I spoke with council during uh, CIP and a couple of count, uh, work sessions here, uh, we had discussed um, rates. I will be proposing uh, a rate increase <coughs> that um, I just, so it, it'll be required. I really hope that when we get to this, that we'll see what I come up with, because um, these loans that will that are we're use, utilizing right now will be repayable. Their first payments are 2021, so this gives me approximately 10 months, or not 10 months, eight to nine months, to get rates going and start um, getting ready for loan repayment and start getting this fund up. The, there was a last rate done and rate, rate increase in 15, 16, and 17. We skipped 18, 19, and then, so we're gonna have to look at 20 to do the, um, what we need to do for loan repayment and the future of this wastewater department. The other side to that too is I do wanna, I wanna apply for some OPWC funds. It will take matching funds. Those you, you ask for a year out or more or project out, and if I don't have funds projected, I can't apply for OPWC without knowing I'm going to be able to get those funds. Um, so this is the, the one fund, um, kind of like where water was, and you see where water came along with those, with those rates. Um, in my previous years, I have tried to do perpetual rate increases. Now, I don't mean perpetual 10, per, perpetual 15%, but... Um, there could be a couple significant years, and then you drop it to like that one, one and a half, two percent, where you might be just under inflation or maybe just over inflation to take up the cost of uh, any inflation on costs that we currently operate with. So um, I definitely would entertain any questions. This is the, the one that I have the extreme concern with. Um, one of the things we had talked about earlier this morning um, is possibly seeing if the van utility crane truck could be put off for a year. Uh, part of the CIP for wastewater is $40,000 for a van utility crane truck. If we were to put that off until 2021, 2022, um, that would give a little bit more cushion for this year. Mm -hmm. We'll just take that $40,000 out of the capital and you can just, that would be about $49,000 with a projected ending balance. Um, you can keep it in there. We can wait towards like the end of the year to get it to see how it comes in. But um, at some point in time, the, the rate increase is going to have to be presented. Yeah. What, what what vehicle is that particularly? Go ahead, Howie. Sorry. Um, there's one. Remember the Jeep was wrecked, and so this would technically be its replacement. Oh, the one that was stolen. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah, one was stolen. Okay. Um, yeah, we had done some minor repairs as we had talked about to the one on the floorboard to for just getting by we have a good truck down there oh okay yeah we have a nice truck we have the chevy there for that backup used around in town for just checking manholes to just help out to get us by 
I thought so you said something about a crane. Or did I just mishear you? I thought you no, said no. In the CIP, it's, it's it, van utility crane truck. Oh, th okay, okay, gotcha. Yeah, it, it's a it would be a much bigger person. I just misunderstood what he said. No. Gotcha. Well, I mean, I I would have him make that call. I mean, as far as well, we'll have to amend the CIP, so it'd be part of it. You mean if you want to take it out? Yeah, should we take it out? Because you guys pass it as being it. Yeah. Right. I, I would ask his opinion on that. No, we, we discussed it. He he is. Uh, he oh, you are he is, oh, we already discussed. We discussed this this morning. So, oh, so he, you guys are okay. Yeah, we're okay with it. Just to help cushion that bottom line. Yeah. But again, we need. Well, I mean, if he says, in my opinion, if he doesn't, if he says his departments can get by without it for another year, then and they're safe and everything's yeah. As far as I, my opinion is. What do you think, sir? I don't know. Mr. Cop, Mr. Cook. <laughs> <laughs> well, I know. I was going to wait yeah. to you, though. You want us to keep it, don't you? Yeah. We've you got okay it in. We've got it in the CIP. So if we don't yeah, spend are it. Close, are you okay with that being yeah. that close? Why do we need to adjust the CIP? Because it's already been passed. Now, we, I understand that. But said, if we don't spend it, it's, yeah. it's still there. I mean, it's still there, but then it also well, it looks like we didn't execute the order from council because we left the CIP purpose hanging out there. So it's, I'm not trying to, well, I, two I, years I, down the road, be accused of not fulfilling council's orders because... Well, but if, if council sense. understands, I know, that's, a bad thing. that's my concern. And council basically is sitting here and we're talking about this, so my feeling is you got it in there, we didn't spend it, it's just like the money for the parking lot out there. Right, but another thing with that too is, is if we don't amend the CIP and we need it for other purposes, then we have to go back and amend the CIP. Oh, I see what you're saying. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah right now, I'd, it's only I'd rather work. amend the CIP if we need it rather than go back and do two in. Well, I have to amend the CIP anyway for other things. So I would just knock it out one shot because like right now, say if we leave that one out and it's getting close to the year and we need to pull five thousand dollars out of that line out now we have to go back and redo the CAP at that point in time. Does that make sense? What do you think, Miss Peggy Eagleson? Does that make sense? I yes, agree with Randy. I mean he's already gonna be making changes, so may as well go ahead and change that and always in there. Miss Hopkins? Either way. Mr. Grimm. Yeah. Go ahead and do it. Do it. <coughs> Take it out. There's your answer. So if we to so yeah to clear to amend the CIP to remove it, can we appropriate it not to specifically spend, but let's say we get to the end of the clarifier project, and the ending fund balance right near the end of the year is going to be a very, is it going to be positive? Let's say ten thousand. Mm -hmm. I could potentially use that forty thousand to pay more on that clarifier. Take out less loan. Yeah. Are you suggesting we put that forty thousand into the miscellaneous line item, or do you want to put its? Well, so less yeah, miscellaneous could be a very good. Lower our yeah. Debt. Yeah, what, I, what do you think? With it? Yeah. Well, where are you take? Where are you putting the money in? But it wouldn't be appropriate if we just take it out. So it's got I mean, it's, it's in there there already in the capital. Yeah, right? we're taking it out. And you're taking it out. So now you want to put it somewhere else. Yeah, whatever you appropriate. So why wouldn't you just? Well, the problem is if I appropriate it to the clarifier now, it can only be used for the clarifier. And if I have something go and I need to use 40 for yeah, something else. Yes, yeah, but not specific to. Yeah. Yeah. I won't be able to see. <laughs> I mean, wherever, whatever I want to put it in here. Then. I forgot we're being recorded. Let me think about this. I'll think about it. We'll get back to your strategy because watch yourself. I know. Can we You're do like a no? Can we, can we do like a payment line item for capital? True. That, it, it, it's going to require internal discussion from us, but we'll figure out the best way to utilize it. I don't want to hold it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Do we have any kind of an idea of how much of a rate increase we're talking? The two first ones I got. The first one I'm looking at is uh, close to <coughs> twenty percent for the first year. How much? Twenty. Ooh. Water waters ended up being thirty five, I believe, thirty five, fifteen, five and five, I think is what theirs ended up being. Oh. 
I'm still working on numbers now that I have some real fine tune. Um, but yeah, just just my my rough is where I'm at was like a 20, 15, and then you know maybe doing a five five. Well, just like when we did the the main water tower, I know we're going to have work sessions on this, and we can. It is, and I want to politely remind everyone when we went through this with the water rate increases. It was like a 35, 15, 15, and people just looked at that 35%, and we had a packed house. Yeah. The moment that Jim Leffley gave the actual dollar amount your bill would be increased, everyone's like, what? I've been here for that much. It is not. You were right. It when the, I the figured percentage, I should have. Percentage. Yeah, I apologize. It, it would average out because an average uh, residential was forty five hundred gallons a month, right. which comes out it's about four dollars. Right. The so percentage for, sounds for, scary. For my, average, like, yeah. my, yeah. my bad. We're going to be talking about dollars, not percentage. Right. Yeah. Yeah. At least I know. I know. Down the wrong path. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. When I when I approach it this time, uh, I, we did that with the water. It will be in dollars. Because that's exactly what happened. Yeah, so and once people we talked the percentages, dollar amount, it was yeah. no one really everyone was terrified. Then yeah. they saw the actual dollar amount. It was like, okay, yeah, I don't. They said he could free water. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Huh. Turned up his meter. Why <laughs> <laughs> oh, you guys get free utilities? What are you talking about? I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> kidding. <laughs> <laughs> kidding. <laughs> kidding. But please, I, I am open to tons of discussion with my enterprises. Um, they are your most critical. Um, they require a lot of back and forth uh, education, instruction, training to make sure that your two fundamental water and wastewater stay in excellent shape. <coughs> Any questions on wastewater? Mr. Mayor, I'm going to recommend it's 4 o'clock. Maybe we take 5 10 minutes. Take 10? Take sure. Take Sounds 10. good to me. All right, and moving on. Swimming pool. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> this is Randy's. No, it's not. <laughs> All right, let's go uh, to revenues. <laughs> what, do you think, what do you think they're scared? <laughs> uh, let's go ahead and reduce the pool memberships to 15,000. Do, do I have any other buddy? Okay. All right, all serious. The yeah. pool's got some, we, we got to talk about the pool. But, Mr. Kitko. I'll give you the basics of it, and we can get into that discussion. So we brought uh, 19,841 forward from 2019. And with pool memberships, daily gate fees, concessions, party rentals, and games, we're estimating to um, bring in approximately, with a general fund transfer of $20,000, $97,250. So with that $97,250 revenue, we are looking to expend wages of $45,000 in the appropriate French benefits to equal out about $57,800. Um, your gas electric to heat the uh, pool and um, run everything else, communication, <coughs> excuse me, maintenance of facilities, maintenance of equipment, and your uh, basically everyday operational stuff is around 22000 And then we get down to some other operational of concession stand supplies, your chemicals that it takes to run the pool during the year, um, your operational supplies, uh, repair and maintenance, small tools, though that tallies up to twenty three thousand two fifty. And in capital outlay, we have uh, set aside in your approved capital outlay of forty five thousand dollars, which includes pool maintenance of twenty five, AED defibrillator of three thousand, pump and related equipment seven thousand, security system five thousand and entryway floor renovation of $5,000. Uh, so at the end, the pool expenses would equal to $149,050. So with your carry forward balance, your revenues, and your expenditures, the ending swimming pool balance is estimated to be a negative $31,959. Mr. Bridge. Oh, thank you for that segue. So when we look at this, um, last year the pool did a $40,000 transfer. So when you actually look at that $40,000 ending balance, you was solely because of the $40,000 transfer. So if that general fund transfer did not occur last year, it would be a difference between the negative and the so one of the few things we can do is get about the transfer in from the general fund. So you guys might be slashing your tax. 
that the pool is considered an enterprise fund, so it's not in, in a negative balance. But we're going to have the wall, and we're going to have a discussion about how the council is. If the, uh, <clears throat> where's it at here? So first off, April, thank you for coming. The wages, I know we had talked about the wages have to be increased to be competitive with the fitness center and then given the manager of the race. So do you think that 40, increasing it up to the 45 would be enough? Let's just start with that first. You, should we go more? Because let's figure out what we need so we know what the bottom line is to see like what we can do. We need to be competitive with the fitness center because I don't want our good guards to go. For which part? Oh, if. I mean, think same. about your outdoors, mm -hmm. people, music. So just based off the difference between what we pay, which is the minimum wage, which is 25, you said? 870. Don't and they get is, a little what, bit more? What does the pool, what, what, does, what they pay, 10? 10? Minus what? What was the 8 So that's the difference between hours. So about how many hours are allocated to the pool? Just a Do we give any of the lifeguards any benefits as far as maybe a free pool pass or anything like that? So that's not a benefit we can give them, they already have it. So me and Debbie did a, did a calculation actually at the same time, not knowing we were doing it, and we came up with so, the same number. Except how many, how many lifeguards in that 16 hour period do you have? Most of seven of seven oh, folks, okay. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. so on average, so we're going to average that. Five. 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 So five. So times that eight, seven, fifteen, seventy-two. Ninety-two. That's not a ten gram. That's what I thought. So. So that's we, a ten gram though increase from the prior. And we almost. And we almost. I put up. seven thousand. So we need yeah. to probably put another four thousand. Well, I was looking at what we spent last year this year. Yeah, that's what we did last year, and then I added the 7,000. So I say 7,000 plus the 5,000 would be 12,000, which is a little bit over the 9360. But then we're going to have subsequent, we have to do an increase. Be more of a negative. Yeah. So. Well, it is going to be more of a negative, yeah. but we, that's where we need to figure out what we need to figure out how we're going to correct it. That 130,000 is the actual revenue for the pool last year? Correct? Please. Yes, but remember it had 40,000 transfer in from the general fund. Oh, right. So the revenue was more like 90. But then if you wouldn't have the transfer in, you wouldn't have done all those up. I was going to say, we had a lot of upgrades. Well, you can't say the pool 
supposed to deposit a balance when the when the no I'm not I, I'm saying I, I know what you're saying so when the transfer then yeah then some of those upgrades probably wouldn't have paid. yeah that's all I'm saying I'm saying but I want to take a look at I want to take a look at the capital real quick go ahead Mr. Cobb I'm sorry I've got a question April is it not time to maybe increase the non-resident fees to cover some of this cost I know we talked about it, but I mean, I do have price increases. There are increases. Our flyer is already out. It goes out at the end of each season for the next season. So 2020 prices are already out. We've already sold passes and things such as that. Um, you know, and I do. I have increased the prices of the parties, swim lessons, um, concession stand prices will go up. You know, I have to raise those to compensate for minimum wage going. Up. Okay, let me, let me, sorry, can I interrupt everyone? Right I don't want to get off track, but I know we had talked about in the CIP, in our meeting, administrative, moves, administrative meeting this morning, pool maintenance, we have 25000 in for the CIP. And the description on that ad in the CIP was repair of unforeseen weather damage, including equipment and other miscellaneous repairs in 2024. That's $25,000. Then on top of that, we have a $7,000 line item for pump and related equipment. So are we able to look at that $25,000 general pool maintenance and look at taking some of that off because we already have the $7,000 put in the pump? Okay. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. We use, we use some of that small stuff. This is where we get in there and all of a sudden we find a huge crack that surface that we didn't anticipate through the winter. Because we have a 5,000 security system, I would like that. So if we look at taking some off the pool maintenance 25 and then maybe put off the entry pool renovation for a year, what do you guys think? I was going to ask Mr. Kitko what he thought about. I know you spoke of a couple options as far as sealing up that deep end. You know the deep end is the, tr the trouble area for water leaks. Yep, I did get... Uh, do we think we should hold off on that for a year? Or? You, you, yeah, you're going to have to. I just got the prices about a month ago. Um, your blanketing the deep end is going to be about sixty thousand dollars to seal off underneath the deep end. That, is that the objection from behind you? Were yes. Talking about? Yeah, to do the whole deep end, not just cracks. Um, the liner portion. I just spoke with that gentleman again about a month ago. He's going to be here in March to come actually take a physical look at our pool because I told him I said we have a lot of negative pressure. He is right around eighty to eighty-five thousand. He said his quote may go up a little bit. It was at seventy-eight. Um, we discussed what we are required to do, but I said, you really need to come take a look at ours. But that's for, that was for the whole pool. That's for the whole pool liner, and I think he was saying 10 year. Yeah. 10 year on that liner. I think. <coughs> and I would like to just uh, address Mr. Cobb's, it's saying about non-resident. Mr. Cobb, you had asked about non-resident. We had discussed that what had happened is uh, the Huber Heights YMCA, Troy, Tip City, and Springfield um, already take most of those customers. So as soon as we probably adjust their rates, they'll, then they'll definitely go to their water parks and they won't come visit us. That's, that's kind of one of the reasons I think we decided to not have a non-resident is they have a great option to leave us for some probably place closer to them. Well, if you go to Tip City's pool, non-resident pays five dollars more per person. Go to Huber Heights pool, pay five dollars more. Right, but they have a, a high residency to already occupy their pool. They don't need non-residents really coming in. If they got a lot of non-residents -res, non sure. coming in, sure, they have a lot of non-residents coming in because they have water slides because they got brand yep. new pools right. and they got nice facilities. But we don't have that draw to bring non-residents in. All I'm saying here, and and I know what she's up against, but we've got to find some way. Mm -hmm. Increasing the revenue so we can support this. How about a raffle like we did for the Heritage Festival? That brings in a lot of money. Well, I'll, I mean, April's done a fine job of the pool since she took it over. I'm not going to. Well, we got to find some way to start covering this cost of the pool. I think a lot of it comes down to the capital project we're putting in, and it's a double edged sword. Right. Yep. I mean, it is. We have to improve. But we also have to be able to afford that. And I know last year we did a lot of past 
do capital improvements at that point. That one might change. You know, so council has the opportunity here to adjust the capital for this year just a little bit. But at the end of the day, unless there's no revenue stream being generated or increased, whether through gate fees or concession fees, the end result is the general fund transfer is going to have to do more than what it is. Because I don't know what other way we can get it to be a positive fund balance without the general fund stepping in. Mm -hmm. Council's okay with that. That's great. You guys can discuss that amongst yourself. But there's really only so many things we can do with this particular fund to get it even or slightly positive. Mm -hmm. Does an enterprise fund require, is it required of supporting? Um, it, it, is, it is highly recommended that the fund is able to supplement. Part of our job is to provide the service. There are already enough people complaining there's nothing to do with this now. At least three months out of the year, we can do this. Are you okay with it? I am okay with, okay, it's a shortfall of 30,000 plus 20,000 from the general fund that makes a shortfall of 50,000. You're gonna need probably a total transfer of $60,000 from the general fund. Yeah, just thank you. Um, Thank you very much. Is it worth 60000 to provide something for the kids in the community? I think it is. It is to me. Yeah. What's the, what's that, the that amounts to about $10 a person in the community population. If you want my honest opinion, and I'm not trying to rain on the parade, I think it's a high transfer for the general fund to do. That is just my opinion. Why was it 60 though? Yeah, why yeah. is well, it 60? Well, because it's going to have to be 60. If you look at your current balance of negative $31,000 here, you, that's accounting for a $20,000 already. Yeah, so that, that so would maybe it yeah, 51000 But if you wanted to have some cushion, you would need to put a little bit more into 50000 Yep. And you'd have to go 55 or 60. I have a, I have a suggestion. Mm -hmm. How about, and I don't know if you've ever done anything like this before in the city, but how about a donation letter sent out to all the business and, and explain what we're, what you just said, that this is a service that we'd like to continue, you know, would, would anybody like to donate to the pool so we could maintain it and keep it running, uh, you know, and, and have these programs for the swim club and things like that, see if you would generate any money to help fund the pool. You're allowed, I mean, that, you're allowed to do that. I just wondered if we could. Well, the thing is, businesses are already hammered. They do. All right. Well, unless you hit some of the big well, corporate ones, right? Like, and, and we're not. We're not. I mean, we're not telling them they have to. It's we, just. We a, don't want to detract from the festival. And they we don't, don't want to fireworks. And stuff the like fireworks, that. the farmers market, all the other things <coughs> that, they, that we uh, rely on businesses for. And a lot of businesses too just step up and give money without even asking. And here's 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 what I recommend because I think. Usually when we've done the transfers, we've always waited towards the end of the year to see if, how much the pool would need. Last year it was just done automatically. I say that we go ahead and earmark the $60,000 into it. We don't do it right away. We can see how the funds come in throughout the summer. And then we know we have a $60,000 blanket there if we need to transfer it in. The pool at the end of the year may only need 40 of it. They may only need enough for that pool to break even would be, would be fine. We just can't have it end in a negative balance for the year. So we can earmark that 60. Doesn't mean it's going to use it, but if it needs it, it's there. April's only been running it for what, two years? Uh, Four. Four? Four? Okay. The way I look at it is it's still it growing. Has gone however many years without any updates. No mm -hmm. upgrades, nothing. Nothing going into it. I mean, it was the same way, same paint. So, yeah, we're spending more money, but we're maintaining it and we're giving it a better appeal for people. A swim team, it's looking better. The bathroom, people want to come now because the bathrooms are nicer. So, the more we put into it, the more people it's going to attract, and they're going to want to come back or have a party at the pool or whatever. Um, we will do this, but you know, on the paper, it's the 31,000. And like, like you said, we may or we may not need it. But if you stop and you think, like you said, it's a service, and if you're going to take $10,000 and blow it up in fireworks, and then give Parks and Rec another 20000 for Easter egg hunt. I mean, this is, those two events in a whole summer. Well, I, I, a short amount of time, you're providing a whole summer of entertainment for kids, and you're also giving 
you know, all the high school kids their first employment opportunity. They're getting their feet wet and working in the world. No one's, wait, no one's denying that. I agree with you, but the difference is what, what I'd like to what I'd like to point out is what you said about those events. Those events are housing the general fund. This is a supposedly self-sustaining enterprise right. fund. Yeah. You know, so they're two completely. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying, but you yeah. out, but at the same time, too, the other devil cap of this is sixty thousand dollars to supplement for the pool out of the general fund. My opinion of it is it's too high. That's just my opinion to you guys. But if you took out all that capital outlay that we put in last year and this mm -hmm. year and the year before, then we would just be breaking. Well, and that's my, like my segue. Any, I guess we're not getting any more appeal. We're not bringing any more. People I understand in. that, but what I was also going to say too is it's very similar to our general fund this year. You know, I agree with putting money into that pool because if we were stagnant with it, no one would come. I'm always going to sit there and say, yeah, from a city manager standpoint. Supplementing the pool with sixty thousand dollars general fund money is high. That is my opinion. I will stick with it. I'm not saying I don't agree with you guys doing it. Now, when you look at our general fund, we ended with one point one point one million this year. We are making massive investments in the city building, so we don't have to pay rent anymore. We are investing in a planning department, so he can have some revenue. So it's a cash flow. When you look at our general fund, we took a hit this year. Our ending balance is 1.1. Now it's projected to be about 500,000 next year because we're making investments. It's the same thing as the pool. We're making investments in the pool. It's just a general fund just has to supplement. I'm down with putting 60,000 in and seeing at the end of the year how much it's going to need. What's the reason for putting so much in? Right now it's at negative 31. Uh huh. Yep. So if we do a total of 60, that'll put it out on paper. Right now it's a positive five to ten thousand dollars. The only thing with that is it looks like we supplemented it with 60000 and we really might not be needing to. Right, but you need you to have something on the book. You won't know that until the next year. Yeah, you won't yeah. know that until the yeah. next year. But having, having half of the left over is still infinitely better. No improvements and ending up with a balance of $100. Oh, I agree with you. There's a lot of investments we're doing across the journal funds taking a hit for And those year. investments mm -hmm. are going to pay off. Sure. Yeah, and, and let me point out, or say, I mean, <coughs> point out. I'm sure you all can see it. So, if you do look at the ending, or at the pool revenue, um, for uh, what is that? That's 17, 18. I, okay, so yeah. So from 17 to 18, it made an 18 thousand dollar jump in revenue. I'm just gonna skip. What? Uh, I made what? If, if so not made, but I'm sorry, just the revenue. Looking at the revenue total. An increase. It, an oh, increase okay, in revenue. Bottom. Gotcha. So from 70 to 88. I'm going to skip. Oh, that's showing it way up. Right. So, mm -hmm. I mean, I think the things that they've implemented and then, then the city, you know, the bathrooms and whatnot, I mean, it's definitely drawn in more crowd, the swim team and whatnot. Mm -hmm. um, for some of you that, I don't yeah. know if you've heard talk, and I'm not saying this makes it okay, but mo I mean, I don't know of a swimming pool that actually makes money. This pool does not make money. That's, a, that's what I'm saying. Okay. I don't know one that has. No, they don't. You're right. Uh, sure. Last time I checked, the, the Kroger Aquatic was losing almost 100000 a year, mm -hmm. which, I mean, much bigger park. So, but we lose no, money no. on, but we lose money on a lot of things that we provide to citizens. Leaf pickup. We don't get any money from that. Um, a lot of services, you know, shoveling or, or salting streets. I mean, that's a safety issue. But still, that's another service that we give to the city that we, that we totally eat. I mean, how much do we spend on salt a year? I mean, no, ten thousand. Yeah. Right. So I'm just saying, um, I I, I want to work as hard as we can. And I think everybody does to make sure that it gets back to where it needs to be. But um, but at what point in time is it going to be? How much is council going to be willing to supplement the pool for every year? Well, I mean, I if we're going to get to one hundred sixty thousand dollars from here on out every year, is that something you guys want to maintain for a pool that has, doesn't have much of a life expectancy? I don't think it will. Plus, to add on what Mike said. I used the pool a lot when my kids were younger. My daughter is 50 years old, and the bathrooms had not been updated <laughs> until last year. I used to bring some of my friends with me, and we hated using the restrooms. They were clean, but they looked dirty. And when I went last year, and I was telling my friends, they're like, oh, we're, we'll try it now and see how it is, you know. <laughs> It's needed to be done, and if we would keep updating it every year, oh, yeah. we wouldn't have the massive right. amount of capital outlay. And a pool in Ohio is not profitable, but it is a service. 
Do we know, have any idea what the weather, if it's going to be a warm, hot summer or <laughs> <laughs> million dollar question. This was supposed to be the, the worst winter ever, ever been, and it wasn't. <laughs> I do have one last thing, and we, we every investment we put into that pool has been, uh, it's cosmetic. Oh, yeah. Okay. The last thing that is the hard part is the structure of the pool. Um, that is that is what is failing. You know, the, the deep end and stuff like that. Again, we're around that 80 some thousand that we'll have to look at if we want to make that long term investment in the structure or we build someplace. Mm -hmm. You know, I've had Patterson pools. He's told me that the place over at Thomas Cloud Park, that splash pad that they have, was two hundred and fifty thousand dollars yeah for a splash pad and there's no revenue coming back in no there's no revenue there's oh, not much expense because they don't have uh dirty. you know secu uh, lifeguards right. things like that yeah. so yeah so once we i get with this guy and we mean go okay this will be a fix for 10 years that's a long-term investment oh dude. here's your cost and that's not in my opinion that's not astronomical and the big thing with that this investment is to my water department well, the water and, loss to the water department. Well, you know, they, chemicals. It, exactly. We treat that water before it goes in, so that'll be a huge one for the water department also. Thank you. You're welcome. Hmm? Rant over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, man hours. All right, so what, do you, what does council want to do with the $40,000? Yeah, I mean, the additional transfer from general fund. I'd like to do it. I'm, I'm, I'm happy. With Is that what you mean? Yeah, but I'm going to ask you to not answer. I'm, that's what I said. I'm not saying a word. Thank you. <laughs> what do you think, sir? Well, we've got to find some way to cover the cost for going to keep pool. You really don't have many options. So here's the thing. Are we going to stick with the current CIP? Do we need $25,000 in pool maintenance here? Do you need additional 7000 for pumps? Is anything, can anything be done for the pool capital? I got a question I'll address to you, Mr. Kitko. April said sometimes there's a pump that may go out. Yeah, we have a um, we the have pump. For it in the CFP. Yeah, we we have it we have it covered for that. We usually know on opening day what we've spent. The only thing usually after opening day that costs us any money is a pool pump replacement. Usually by that time, we've already done our repairs, our upkeep, we've fixed everything from the winter over, and usually after opening day, the only thing that usually comes out is a pull pump and motor. Well, last year you had to burn the over the boiler. The boiler, yeah, that was from 1999, so, yeah. And that would have pulled a profit that year if that boiler would come in. That's, yeah, good point you brought that up, because that even would have pulled a profit that year. They, Mike, Mike and April had done a fine job. We had to run in the pool. They kept losing money. And I'll guarantee you back then I was ready to close the pool. But we got to find some way to keep this where we can afford it. There, were, there are price increases this year than there was in the last year. Can I ask a question, Mr. Kitko, Mr. Bridge, please? Oh, sure. Could we, you know, because every year the pool's always a hot topic. I mean, it always is. There's, you know, citizens want to know about it. It's all. It's always a hot. Could we, like, you know, when you do a water tower project, could you maybe do like a, a projected, you know, five year? This is what we could do. You know, maybe, you know, whether it's moving the pool completely, rebuild it. I'm not saying we would do it, but just give us some options, like five, ten years out. You know, I, I have the one option, obviously, reline, and I'll I'll know that by after the end of March. Okay, I'll know that one. Relocation. Um, I've had. I've had. I've Mr. heard you mention. I've had Mr. Patterson out here. Yeah. And you know, without, um, they just can't throw a number out. You know, they got. They got to get into some design, yeah. engineering. Right. It's it's as it's, it's simple as it is. Digging a hole and putting some concrete in it. Yeah. It's not simple for them to give me a. Hey, it's going to cost you five hundred thousand dollars to build you a brand new pool, same size, someplace else. Right. I'm not trying to all talk. Day. Really, we don't have a lot of options. So, is council okay with additional transfer in from the <coughs> fund? Yes. Mr. Cook? I really don't have an answer, but yes, go ahead. Yes. Yeah. Yes. 
so be it. All right, so what we'll do is we will increase that additional. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, said, you know, I no. pointed at you. No, you didn't. Point. Yes, I did. You were first, and then you had a side question. I, so, I didn't think Mr. you asked Cobb. Peggy either. <laughs> yeah, she asked yes. Peggy. Oh, did he? Yeah. Okay. So that's going to be another. <laughs> we already got 20 he said another 40. Enthusiastically. Huh? Right? He said enthusiastically. Yeah, 20 in at 40. What are we putting? Yeah, another 40 in there? <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to end up putting 60,000 in there. What number? Yeah, she's adding food this year. Do you have any? Do you have any idea of how much it's going to cost if we have to increase that on to? No, but take that. Twenty-five hundred out of your capital and put it in concession. Well, I can't. Well, it's twenty-five thousand for pool. So that's okay. Let's pick that. Oh, I, I think we can. So I thought when we talked about pool maintenance with the twenty-five thousand dollars, that twenty-five thousand dollars included the new pump. So but we already have the seven thousand dollars earmarked out for a pump. So are we able to reduce that twenty-five thousand dollars for the pool maintenance? If you're saying, oh, you're going to need nobody, if you need a pump or a motor. You already have seven thousand dollars in for a pump. How much is the motor? That's what he's looking at. The pump and motor is usually between six and seven, as you as we put down here. The pump and. So I say you guys pump. cut just a little bit off that pool maintenance, and maybe take five thousand off that pool maintenance and put it back into the concession, so April can go out and get her stuff. I think that's a good thing. Where is the What's twenty-five thousand at? It's in capital. It's in capital. It's so that $45,000 number you see there? Yeah. It's broken down 25,000 for pool maintenance, 3,000 oh. for a defibrillator, 7,000 for a pump, 5 for security system and 5,000 for entry floor renovation. Uh, okay. Can that $500 for training and travel come out? Well, that was expended last year. April said no one we had to figure out. But $500 something is, else may have been a little over and it drew from it. Probably where it came from. <laughs> so you're going to take five thousand off the. Oh, I don't know where it's oh. So what do you? What is your opinion on that? <laughs> to take five thousand off pool maintenance and put it back into concession. Pool maintenance out of the capital. Mm-hmm. The only other thing I would really like to do the flooring, but I think Well, the flooring's already Flooring's in there. Flooring's in there for 5000 yeah. So let's, I mean, seriously, can you guys have a really honest conversation about that $25,000 for pool maintenance? Can you slash it in half? Can you take it down to ten and put 5000 in your concessions? If we had to do some um, injection in behind the deep end, if we found if something come up this winter that we don't know about, yeah, it usually runs 10 to 15 so you should keep it. I think you could probably take uh, you could take five easily off of it. Ten would be, <coughs> would be stretching it. Unless you want to. What are you anticipating though? That's going to cost twenty thousand dollars. It, it's that the deep end. It's you that winter that. over deep end. If it's we get in there and it's, it's a crack or something in there. And the steps are getting kind of rough. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're going to take five thousand off the pool maintenance, right? And you can put it in concessions? Yeah, from the CIP. If we put $5,000 into concessions, what do you expect the yield to be? I usually double whatever I spend. Yeah, I was impressed with the number that it, yeah, I was too. I it, that it drew. That. You did see about 50%. And that, I mean, you were, I think you were down there, Randy, just for conversation's sake. At 4th of July, that pool is. Oh, yeah, it's. It's a, it's there, absolutely. It's a, I just, I try to expand the menu. So we're doing five off of the capital, right? Make that 20. New all the time. Make this 40. Um, I want to add burgers. Make this 40. 40. Okay. Make this I think uh, pretzel that's 16. Yeah. So yeah. Double my pretzel sales. Oh, where were you getting it before? Okay. So that's I mean, not going to change the numbers. Oh. Because right, it's a wash of wash. Okay. But now, we, we bought it. Need to do the transfer. Def, you guys paid for so that's yeah. yourself? Yeah. That's definitely a big item, those pretzels at the pool. Oh. Plus, I know when I go, I try to go before break because there's, you can't get to the concession. Oh, the window. Takes me to 
fund down to four hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> but we can get, we'll we'll easily fit that in under okay. that. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I think it is. Well, we'll figure out some of that because that aluminum is, is is a good board. We'll we'll get it recoded. I think. So where are we at? We'll be going to cemetery when he's done. Cemetery. Ready. All oh, right. So, so are we done with that part? Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. Everyone is okay with the forty additional in the transfer. Yes. Now I already just it's not going to come. I will do my best to not need it. Here's the deal. I think that, like I said, in the in last year was just automatically given over there. I say we wait <coughs> till we know we're going to need it or not, and see how it goes. Well. They had almost that much in capital improvements last year, so that's why. Mm -hmm. yeah. Just one more question. She may have a banner year in concessions and a banner year in gate sales. It could be 90 degrees and muggy all day, and that thing could only need 20 of that 60. You know, Of course, we'll put a little bit more in there so it has a little bit of starting for the year, <coughs> but the rest will just be sucked up by the, back into the general fund. Who would, who would, whose job would that be? Would that be Mr. Kitko's or, or Derek's when he comes on to reach out to like say from just conversation like security national bank would you want to be a you know like Kroger that yeah, sounds like a council job would that be a council yeah. job would be a great council job okay so I, you talk about reaching out for the yeah and zone? writing up a letter mm -hmm. that okay so <coughs> someone on here worked on that, that? would be a great council okay job. thank you is this going to help you yes okay I would I would suggest we consider having somebody from council hit rotary and oh, we're gateway going, we're business meetings 17th. and 17th. and say something there. Yeah. And I mean you don't need to make it a letter, just tell them you're giving them update on yeah. the, well, what we the have situation somebody is. Somebody that goes all the time. No, uh, Randy's going to be the program on the oh, 21st, March, 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 oh. 17th. Oh, okay. Just bragging about how well the city is. Okay. Well, I knew Randy that. Randy loves to brag. You couldn't come to that. You were going to come to that meeting because of rotaries, so that's why I thought you would be there. Absolutely. All right. 6 foot under? 15 feet. All right. This, uh, we'll get to cemetery. Uh, we're in, we're anticipating revenues of sixty one thousand. That includes sale of cemetery lots, grave opening and closing, and foundation construction. We do all that in house. We do not uh, contract any of our uh, work at the cemetery out. Uh, going on to the next page, our expenses. Uh, we expense some of our public works director Greg Slattery out of the wages. And um, on occasion, we do have some overtime, you know, weekend uh, funerals, things like that. Of course, uh, the fringe benefits are the pro rata share or portion of the wages. Travel training, CDL testing, um, again, for the employees that we have out there required to have. Um, gas, electric, it's just the, the house we have out there and the one barn. Um, maintenance of facilities, maintenance of infrastructure and equipment. Uh, this goes into keeping the cemetery dump truck up, the lawn mowers, the backhoe, uh, the mini backhoe that we have out there, and it, which includes our liability insurance to cover all that equipment. Um, office supplies, operational supplies, uniforms uh, for one person, uh, fuel, repair and maintenance supplies, small tools. Those are all items that Greg and or whoever is helping them will utilize to do the daily functions of the cemetery. Capital outlay um, was was previously approved for 37.5, but at the last council meeting, it was uh, raised to amend the CIP via Mr. Bridge, 69,500 to include um, the new truck via ordinance, um, and with miscellaneous $1,000, the expenses are to be 132,150. So if you go to the next page, our beginning balance from 2019 was 83,315. Uh, current cemetery revenue is 61,000, and to expend 132,150, that would have us at an estimated ending cemetery balance of $12,165. Any questions? Okay. 
I don't plan on visiting anytime soon. Cemetery, you want to come? No. Pick up your grave? I'm good. Oh, it's creepy. So you guys get free grave sites. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Will I get the money back from one hour nope, I bought? No. Nope. <laughs> You're not a member of that one. I'm kidding. <laughs> kidding, YouTube. I'm not kidding. trying to be uh, doom and gloom, but is there a lot of space left in the center? We do. We had bought some acreage close to. Um, Oh, God, like holder oil in that back corner. Mm -hmm. We do have some room there. I, I'd have to get with Greg to find out what the, what you consider that estimated time, but there is some, um, I think it's 10, 15 years at least on the acreage that we have. How many stones are out there, just ballpark? I have no idea. No clue. <laughs> at least 20? Yeah, a lot. Um, if there's no questions on there, there are some water and wastewater extra uh, capitals. Those are usually where tap fees come in, and we use those to expend towards, which are they're really small amounts. Um, cemetery perpetual care portion of grave sales uh, go into it. That basically, what cemetery perpetual care is, um, is to fund the cemetery the day that it basically it gets full and there's no revenues anymore, that the perpetual care will take care of that cemetery. In, in perpetuity with those revenues. And really, I think but I don't have anything else on that I typically uh, deal with. And do you have any questions on Semper Perpetual? Okay, good. Yeah. Wait a minute. Did we hit some, you hit some Semper Perpetual, right? Yeah. So there's 10 to 15 years of life left. At, at minimum, um, I'm, I'm for sure, but I'll give it a great because that's kind of a, I usually don't think about that. That's an interesting question. <laughs> we did it when we purchased the land way back when, but. Well, as long as the coronavirus stays away. And we bought five acres is what we bought well, back there. Mm -hmm. We just want them to buy the lots. They don't have to <laughs> move Use in them. right away. Yeah. Start <laughs> Okay, so we good on cemetery perpetual pair, guys. I'm gonna start kicking it up a little bit. We got about an hour left. Is that okay with everyone? So where are we going to? Um, what we're gonna do is in honor of our fire chief. Are you heading out, Mr. Kiko? Have a long day as well. Hmm? Are you uh, no, no, I'm good for today. Oh, okay. No, we're trying to get it done today. So no, 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 no. I'm good. I use okay, asking if I'm. I forgot. I was too busy eating cookies. Yeah, me too. Those are good cookies. Oh, I just want to. Okay, so er, uh, er, uh, uh, blah, blah, blah. emergency ambulance capital. About where we at? Um, you know? um, about that many pages in. Okay. <laughs> what is it again? Right it is page thirteen. Pretty oh, close you numbered to the middle. it, didn't you? I'm doing it. I just remembered. I was like Mike. I was middle busy page, eating cookies. Sure. Very close to the middle. Yeah. That's after the street improvement levy balance. Yeah. 12, 13. Emergency ambulance operating. Yep. Page 13. Capital. Fire chief, you want it? You got it? Um, we want me to do it? Don't matter. Up to you. Are you going to do it in a follow up? If you need me, I'll come in on anything. All right. All right. You're going to say it quicker than I would. 212, uh, revenues. We really can't do anything with those. Debbie gets those based off the uh, estimated auditor re, uh, resources that we get. Estimated resources. So we look at the capital there. Um, emergency ambulance capital really is there just for that. It's for capital purposes. So when we look at our uh, capital for ambulance, let me pull that up real quick. Apologize for my delay. Or can't take me anywhere. EMS capital. So we have got. $260,000 in there? Yes, that's for the medic load system and the new shop. <laughs> okay, we approved at the 2024 EMS capital expenses a total of $69,000. So where is the 260 coming in? Okay, we chose to, because of the um, because of what the carryover balances were, we chose to take the uh, $214,000 the carryover. Yeah, just switching the fund it's coming out of because of the um, carryover balances would, it helps that. Back. So instead of it being
I'm really confused. Oh, don't be confused. I'm just trying to find it. For what? Fire capital? Fire capital is in the first and south of the We had the... Where was the, that medic? The medic should have been split between your... Five. The new medic is split between fire and the mess. No, it was the out of last. If the medic will just go to the 2019 CIP because that's when it was allocated. You have to allocate based on what the CIP says. Um, so the 2019 CIP. Five thousand for the new medic out of fire operating. And council approved a hundred thousand from emergency panels operating from two thirds. So that was approved. And then we have two fund 212 had a sixty thousand. Fund two thirteen had Hundred thousand. Yeah, so basically, you spend. We haven't paid for the medic. Now all we, that carried over. Now we got one. Over. They won't. Okay. Work. So we decided instead of paying it out of. But when we do, <laughs> we have to now and then. Right. Well, we were. Yes. So well, I'm those amending the 2020. Once that the decision was made, we should have amended the 2019 CIP, which would have been done at the last week. So Why we need. Okay. If that's the way you do it. Then well, yeah, because they 2019 year mark it didn't come but out of the funds. It just carries. I understand it carries on the books, but right. we have the legislation to handle that. So, so basically, your CIP here is not a. Um, if you're saying if you don't spend it, <laughs> then you go back and amend your CIP because it's capital improvement project plan. That's why I'm trying to understand how you do it here, so I make sure I do this yes, correct. Yes, it's earmarked. If they don't so, it, you have to go back and then just look at it. Okay. And then we have to amend the 2020. Then we'll keep it the way it was then. And we'll just, there's no reason to go back and do 219. That's, that's I mean, I don't well, want to make extra work on anybody. Well, you're right? Well, yeah. We'll just, I mean. Well, you don't. Where is it? 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 Within that, within that 260 on the 212. But you have that on your books. We passed the 2020 CIP a few months ago, and that carryover balance is not allocated. So right now, you do not have the authority to spend any funds out of the 2020 capital right. improvement. That's yeah, fine. It's fine. We'll just have to go back and then the 2020. Oh, yes. <coughs> <coughs> Because right now you got fire in here. It's the hundred thousand dollars that we're kind of putting in there, so then we'll continue to build. So then yes, yes, that's the fire. So we got to change it. Okay, so we got to amend it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Directions that we made on the line. I haven't seen that. We need to have you. That's the only one. It's in community. There should be more cookies left, but those two girls in the back, I think, look like five of them. 
three. Count the one in the red shirt. <laughs> just <joking>. Yeah. <laughs> the one in the red shirt. Yeah. Okay, gotcha. Correct. All right. So the yeah, numbers like are correct on here. We got to. She also likes candy. Cookies. Cookies. Cookie stop. Load them up. So the numbers are right the way they want to do it on the budget. I have some budget places in that to truck in the back of the thing. So okay. with that being said, we can still focus on these numbers. Um, okay. So capital, they're looking to do 260. Um, you want to explain that? that 260,000 will cover the, new, the price of the new medic, which I also gave all the council. That is the final draft of what the graphics and everything with the new medic will look like. Um, and we'll also cover the load system for the automatic uh, load for the cot and the new cot. For, for that new medic, that way that system can be purchased and drop shipped to drawn then to install it with, as a medic is built. When are you expecting that again? Um, we're hoping for the end of April, 1st of May. Okay. It right now is just now going into the um, beginning of the build stage. And when they build this medic, it's not like they go out and put have a box pre-made. They start from the floor up. They have, they have a composite floor. There's no wood at all in this medic. It's a composite, and then they start welding the walls, welding the cabinets. There's no uh, screws or anything inside. It's all weld. Um, that's the reason it stays in the planning stage for three months. So that way they know they got everything right before they, they actually start, start the build. Um, like I said, that'll go through for that. And then if you're going down, um, beginning in uh, total emergency ambulance, 33, emergency. Um, going down, and then we have the wages. And that's one of our biggest hits, to be honest with you, is our wages for, for the cruise. Are you on with the wages, say, 75000 or six hundred. Where is that? Six hundred thousand. Six hundred thousand. Oh, okay. Keeping those in mind. Gotcha. Yeah, that's our biggest hit. Okay. I mean, it is. Um, with the with the new levy, we did increase our salaries. Uh, we brought our paramedics up to fourteen. We are still not equal to the, to what surrounding departments are. But we're getting there. We're about a dollar to two dollars shy of what they are. Uh, the biggest draw that we have is we work more hours part-time than what the other departments do. Um, mm -hmm. We have no overtime. Uh, then the rest has social security, that type of thing. Uh, going on down, um, gas, electric, uh, auditor, physical exams. Uh, we did add that in this year, physical exams, to start doing a, uh, it'll be a random drug testing every quarter. So many of the firefighters will be, names will be pulled and left going for random drug testing which is something very common with uh, all departments. <coughs> uh, dispatching services, EMS billing, that's what we pay to have our bills, EMS billing taken care of. We don't do it ourselves. Mm -hmm. Maintenance of facilities on, that, on the EMS side. Again, we, you have the same thing on the EMS side as you do on the fire side. It, it's more or less of a mirror of each other, so we, we kind of split the funds in, in between the two the two groups. Um, maintenance of facility, 5,000. Uh, what we're looking at this year is doing a little bit of <clears throat> upkeep more in the station. Maintenance of equipment, that's a big hit because anything we have done to this apparatus, it cost. We had a brake job done on the ladder truck this year and that on the, just for the front brakes and it was $3,000. So anything done on these equipment, it, it, it's expensive. Mm -hmm. Insurance liabilities, um, and then membership dues, that type of thing. We do belong to a lot of different organizations also, like uh, the Ohio Firefighters Association, those type of things. If we don't belong to those groups, then we get kicked out of the F AFG grants, that type of thing, the grant uh, process. Uh, linen off supplies. Uh, operational supplies, of course, just like any of the other groups, it's basically to cover quite a few, uh, few things. Uniform and personal safety equipment, uh, T-shirts, uniform shirts, uniform trousers, that type of thing for the crews. Uh, job shirts for wintertime, that type of thing. Uh, medical supplies is another big hit. 
<laughs> anything that to do with medical, the cost is probably three times what it normally would be because it says medical. Uh, for example, we, we use what's called an IO needle. Is basically drill into a patient's bone with a needle to, to do an IV if it's a full arrest, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. And um, it's a quicker way to get the drugs into their system, that type of thing, especially on a full arrest. A box of five of those needles is $550. And there's only one company that sells them. Wow. So, Maybe we should start a company. Yeah, so it, and like I said, anything medical, they tack a price tag on. Um, fuel, repair and maintenance, um, small tools and equipment, or chainsaw, or uh, K-12 saws, that type of thing, We, if they need to be worked on, that type of thing. And then capital outlay, we also had 39000 in capital outlay. Uh, what that is going to encompass is basically our upgrade from radio radios, like our handhelds, that type of thing, buying additional batteries, that type of thing, plus also to looking at purchasing a new battalion vehicle, or almost a staff vehicle, not a battalion vehicle, uh, a new staff vehicle. Uh, what we had thought we were going to be able to do this, this year, um, maybe getting the charger that the deputies weren't going to use anymore is not going to happen since uh, council brought on a fifth deputy. Uh, so we're going to we need to look at buying another vehicle to replace the Dodge pickup truck. It's pretty much on its last leg. Mm -hmm. And right before this meeting, I was able to speak with Chrysler dealer down here, and it looks like we can get into a, a brand new 2020 Durango for just shy of 35,000. Is that part of the capital outlay? Capital outlay, that 39000 39, Yeah, so that's included. Okay. Yes, and miscellaneous, 1000 So that, you know, 868110 Uh There's a total of 142686 And then fire capital, <coughs> basically same thing, tax, that type of thing that you go into uh, equipment. Um, capital outlay, 136,000. Uh, um, we also look at state grants that we try to get to recoup some of those those funds. Um, the capital outlay, that one, um, 136, is going to entail new equipment for the rigs, new uh, tools, new hose, <coughs> new nozzles, that type of thing. Our hose is getting to the point now with a um, hose. It has a life shelf life of uh, 15 years, so a lot of our hose is starting to get that reach that lifetime span, and we have to replace it. And that's it. Am I forgetting anything? Yes, I'm out of the 100. Um, 136. Uh, he has to replace uh, gear. Yeah. So okay. we. Um, how many sets? We, we average, we selected to, or suggested to buy five sets of new gear each year. That keeps us with gear in stock in case I get a firefighter, their gear gets destroyed or contaminated on the scene. I can replace that, that gear. Plus also every 10 years, whether the gear is good or not, I have to take it out of service because it's uh, use life is only 10 years. That's from helmet all the way down the boots. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also saving for the new, uh, new engine. So We're looking to try to buy a new engine in 20, probably 2024, 2023, mm -hmm. uh, and putting that money back each year a little bit to compensate for that. And then... The uh, levy's five years long, right? Excuse me? The levy's only good for five years, right? Five years. That's the reason what, we're going to have to revisit that at that time. Right. What year are you in now? We're in the second year of the levy. One of the things I suggested to you guys when the levy passed was, you know, kind of leave a year where you're not buying any big capital projects just in case it doesn't get real. <coughs> the likelihood it doesn't is slim to none. Cause they're right. Well, after this year, we're not looking at buying any. So how many years are you going to have of revenue, the levy additional revenue coming in where you're not expending for a big capital project? Three. Kind of get that pad up just in case you need it. Three. Yeah, three years of... Because after buying the new medic this year, mm -hmm. we're not planning on buying uh, another medic or anything like that. You bought a medic and then you bought a fire engine. No, no, no. That's we're not buying a fire engine. In, in this oh, you're just saving up for it. Save it up for it. Right. For how long? Though? Well, to, for a new engine, we're probably going to be saving up for four, four years. years. When's the levy over? Three. 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 Twenty twenty-three. 
the same year they're done they're putting away for it. So they don't have a year where they don't have a, they're not saving or buying a big capital purchase, which is fine. That was the recommendation I made to you guys because right now if that levy don't pass, you're not getting additional revenue for 2024. Right. But if it doesn't pass, that's all. Well, if it doesn't pass, they can't purchase it with the cash we saved. That's basically well, what we're saying. Well, that would be an option, too. I mean, that's why if, or we, you find yeah, if we're saving it, right. the money's sitting there, it'll be in the carryover. And, of course, that's in 2024, if the levy would pass, then obviously we would spend our cash on the fire engine at that point. So gotcha. that's why it's that's why you, you do okay? it. Yeah, I want to say something cheap. Oh, go ahead. The YouTuber. Yeah. Oh, that's good. Chief, what's your jaws of life look like? Jaws of life right now are, are in good condition because we have a maintenance program for them every year. Uh, we are looking at the same time, the year frame times that we're um, looking at purchasing new in, in, in those years. We're looking at replacing those power tools with the new ones that are electric, or I should say electric, battery operated, uh, which is a lot more versatile and a lot less maintenance and a lot less cost or at the initial cost we have for but they're a lot less costly. We can go to Lowe's and buy a DeWalt battery and put in it, and it works. And I don't have to buy the battery from, you know. Right. Well, I'm just concerned. I mean, when I was on, I seen a few times we went out, arms went down. Right. And it's something when you got to wait for me to come in and set it going. Right. Well, and that's, that's where we, what we would do is once we buy this new, buy a new set of tools, we would take the set that we have, <coughs> as long as they're still in operating, which I don't see why they wouldn't be, is with, because like I said, we do keep a good maintenance on them. We don't use them at that often. Um, they would go as a reserve set, so that way we would have a capability of having two sets. <laughs> it's on camera. <laughs> yeah, actually, sir, please do. <laughs> Um, April stand in front of Don't you dare. <laughs> <laughs> and like I said, if you look at some of the line items, like I said, they mirror each other from the ambulance to fire, um, training, travel, that type of thing. We do send some, try to send some of our guys to classes, um, and some of our, our crew takes, they'll take courses. Um, like I have one firefighter wanting to take a plans for you course, which is fine. Um, only thing that what we do is if we pay totally for their course, that we require them to sign a letter saying that they'll, they'll work for the division for two years. And if they quit within that two years, they, they have to reimburse the division for that course. So, um, fire prevention, uh, $3,000 we put in there. I know that seems like a lot of money for fire prevention, but it's not. Uh, the little things that we hand out to the kids and to the public, uh, when you start looking and have to purchasing, purchasing those, they, it looks neat and easy because they're only like 59 cents a piece. They're, but when you start buying 300 of them at a time or 200 of them at a time, uh, like the little plastic helmets that we carry, that type of thing, it eats that budget up real quick, real quick. And we, do, we use that not only just for fire prevention week, but we also use it through the year to have those things on, on board to hand out to the public, hand out to kids and stuff. Um, and other stuff, the same thing, postal physical exams, uh, we put 2000 in that, again, covering for that. Uh, dispatch services, the dispatch service, again, is split in between the fire and the EMS. Uh, 13000 is comes out of the fire side, and the other side comes out of the EMS side. Maintenance of facility, again, uh, maintenance of equipment, uh, 25000 again. And one thing also hurts us with our maintenance of equipment is the age of our fleet. The, our frontline fire engine is 21 years old. That's old for an engine. The ladder truck is 16 years old. <coughs> our medic, the frontline medic right now is almost nine years old and it's right shy of 180,000 miles on it. And that's just due to our transport distances. Yeah. Going to the valley, one trip to Miami Valley and back is 40 miles round trip for us. That's insane. So when you're doing that two or three times a day. Um, insurance, membership dues again. Um, supplies, operational supplies. Uniforms, again. 
crews, fuel, repair, maintenance, supplies, small tools and equipment. Um, we try, when I, when I do POs, I try my best to allocate out of both sides of the house for, for each PO, so that way I'm kind of pulling from both sides of the fence. Um, to kind of keep this close to find out it's open. Uh, there's very few things on here that I, that I have to pull out of one side. That's the only thing really is like medical supplies, that type of thing. That's the only one I can't mm -hmm. justify really pulling out of fireside. Um, but capital outlay, uh, miscellaneous in the capital outlay, we have 82500 That was for the... Um, that is for t uh, miscellaneous tools, uh, fire station renovations, once again, because I think you said we need well, there's twenty-five thousand dollars for roof repairs. Right, and another twenty-five for and another twenty-five for renovation in the system. There's ten thousand for new computers and equipment, and a thermal imaging camera at seventy-five hundred dollars. Um, we have one image thermal imaging camera now that's getting aged, um, and so we'll be purchasing another one that'll give us two. Uh, reason for that is if a lot of times pieces of apparatus may not go through the fire. Uh, if we get uh, bumped out of mutual aid, say to Bethel Towns or Bethel Miami, something like that, they're only going to usually call for one piece. They probably won't call for the truck. Um, right now, the, the thermal imager is carried on the engine. This way, they have one. Uh, also, too, on a lot of times on a scene, you can use two thermal imager cameras very easily. Uh, what that camera does, it allows us, when we're inside the building, we can look for hot spots in the walls. We can also look for victims, that type of thing. It has multiple uses, but that's just the main ones. Um, and our computers right now, the newest desktop computer in the station right now is mine, and it's, it's eight years old. Oh my God, that's old for that's, a computer. Yeah. yeah, it is. And the computer that's behind you is one of the ones that we replaced. Uh, that's our training, that's used for the training computer. It's hooked in with the smart board. That one's very important, it needs to be updated. Uh, mine, and then the in the back in the office for the uh, uh, assistant chief and captains and then we'll take the, the best computer out of what we have left and put it in the uh, day room for the crews they use they use it for because all of our reporting is is uh, electronic we don't use really any paper anymore at all for our reports uh, so they do a report here in set and type the report and they have a, a block amount of time to get the report done and they have to fax that report to the receiving hospital they took the patient to um, that's where that's where our computers stand. Um, and it also shows the the levees. <coughs> Anything I'm missing, Debbie or, or Mr. Bridge? Good job. Any questions on what we're trying to do? Or um, we're, we're, we do have a five-year plan. Uh, what we're wanting to look forward to trying to do. Uh, we do have the Elizabeth Township contract for another year and a half. Um, to be honest, we're seriously looking at mm -hmm. that time frame comes up mm -hmm. whether or not we're going to need it or not. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Chief. We good? Looks we like it. Okay. <clears throat> well, let me take it. Let me try to read. Where are we at here? Health levy, um, that's a wash in, wash out. We have a levy for that. We get we collect the money, then we send it out to the Clark County Combined Health District again, and just wash. Any questions on the health levy? Nope. Okay, so then we get to the 0.5% police levy. Uh, this one is going to be, this is not updated. So when we look at the police levy revenue, uh, Debbie put 5000 there. I actually added 30000 onto that. Yeah, no. um, so really that revenue on the green side should be 530000 because I think we'll collect a little bit more. So total revenue is projected? Five, yeah, 530000 530. Mm -hmm. Yep. And then this is the first year that we had five deputies on. So we had to go in and change our contractual. So when we see that down at the expenses, expenses it's a big number, $565,510. Now, don't let that scare you, because what that is, is how they bill us for the contract for the deputies. We have five deputies. They are billing us for five top step deputies and also five deputies that we are assuming have a insurance Full plan. family insurance. Full family insurance plan. So that right there is the worst case scenario just based off the contract of deputies. That price also includes 
excuse me, around twelve thousand one hundred dollars for the vehicle lease that council wants to do opposed to buying that car. That vehicle lease also includes their supplies and their fuel. So we have additional cost savings with that as well. Um, the other stuff is kind of just we just kind of mirror from year to year. Uh, maintenance of equipment, contractual. Anyone have any questions on any of those line items? Contractual materials or supplies, capital outlay. That does consist of I know there's some money in there for cruiser cams. Um, there is not money in there for GPS. I thought I was getting ready to ask you. Um, that may be difficult. But GPS? Yes. Um, <coughs> so, <coughs> where's my capital for a pull, please? Not, not even in the right direction. Do you have your tooled up over there? Now? Awesome. Thank you, Howie. Bam. Right there. Uh, Seventeen thousand five hundred for equipment upgrades. Twelve thousand for a substation relocation or renovation. That I would love to stay in there. And then thirty thousand for cruiser cams. Um, so. What was the second? The relocate. What was it? Substation relocation or renovation. How much? Twelve thousand. Relocation meaning. Move it, but it's not going to happen before I don't. Okay. I would like to honestly get a little some cheap hardwood floor in there. Paint the walls white. Um, until we have a really discussion about where they're going to oh, go. Oh, okay. See what I'm saying? I'd like to do just a band-aid fix. Yeah. The carpet over there is horrible. Yeah. Not really that big of a front room. I don't know how much it's going to cost to do laminate hardwood in there. We have wood paneling in there. Um, the goal is to, when we go and move into our new city building and get some new furniture, a lot of that old stuff we have in the city building can be recycled down here. Their desks are literally falling apart. So, um, we do need to put a little bit of money into that section. Uh, I don't think we're quite there yet to find a new location, tear it down, um, because we're making that investment in the fifth step of the year. So, at some point in time, a year or two down the road, you guys have to decide if you guys want to, or what you're going to do about the substation, you're going to the fifth deputy. You're going to take that fifth deputy off, start saving for a new substation, how do you guys want to do it? Still is the opportunity mm -hmm. to purchase our current building, if that's what council wants to do down the road out of these funds. Uh, but that's currently what it says. Um, any questions or discussion on anything with the police level? Mr. Bridge, does that um, contractual include the extra duty? When you, when you have extra duty, I'm curious. Uh, no, but there should be a line item for that. Oh, okay. Okay. That's usually expended out of miscellaneous, but they didn't do any last three thousand there for So yeah, well I'll have to pump some money in there for somewhere. Why wasn't that brought up this morning? I didn't think that me either. Um I would probably Debbie, where would we put that? Because it's not a contract, it's just for extra duty. You triggered me when you said the twelve thousand for something else. No, I got you, yeah. <coughs> I'm pretty sure that's where she takes it out of. That's, uh, out she of probably it. did because it's, we never expend right. it. So we never expend yeah. that much because we don't have that pool. Um, pay the extra duty on 4th of July, I'm pretty sure. That just comes out of that. Are we okay with that? Because if we do end up getting five deputies with five mm -hmm. main health care plan, that's going to be the max that it does. The likelihood of that happening is something like that. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, we're good. I think so. Yeah, we'll say that they'll put another hundred thousand dollars in that one hundred twenty or so. Yeah, I'll think they'll be fine. We're good. If not, we'll come back. So my two things on the police is one. Well, yeah, I mean, I would. It's all going to depend on when we move, what kind of possible option they would give us on our building for purchase. Mm -hmm. I, mean, sure. I think it would be a great idea if, if mm -hmm. the price is right. Well, you're going to have to cut a short because, like we said, if we're going to be downtown and that business behind us ever chooses to go, I would like council to provide that. To have council to have there too. So that way you have a group of your city building and You know, um, but that's something that's going to be tough. Yeah, they seem to be thriving. And you mm -hmm. They seem to be thriving. 
when I went by there when we had a I think it was the Christmas tree lighting or something. Mm -hmm. I think it was a Christmas tree yeah, lighting. They, were they had a lot of people in there. Yeah, they do like the Dungeon and Dragon games. Yeah. And stuff like that. But, you know. And we're not going to force them out by any means. No. It just happens to work out that way. Great. But you said you'd be a problem with GPS? Um, I heard it's very expensive. I really haven't researched that much. Um, they are our cars. Um, but it would Maybe just for future. I think that's the reason why we wanted to do um, So I would just respect that maybe we just we see how this year goes okay. and then reanalyze that. I would like to look at trap at cruiser cams, um, see what we can do with that. Um, would we put in there for that? 30000 Seems that expensive. Huh? I don't know if it was a blind number. I don't remember researching it for exactly. Yeah, number. I remember we talked. Yeah. Okay. You know, so. Um, but, yeah, everyone okay with that? Okay, moving on. General bond retirement, this is for some of the bonds that we have. Um, basically, the general fund supports these, so every year we transfer out uh, from the general fund to pay these bond retirement. And it's usually a wash, we transfer money in, we transfer out. Um, that also includes for the next page on the Twin Creek Infrastructure Bond Retirement. That is, we do get a little bit of revenue in from the assessments, um, but then the general fund ends up supplementing that. Um, so it's usually a wash in, wash out. I would like for you to pay attention to that ending fund balance. It's $334,205. When I first became city manager, me and the former law director um, settled some very long overdue support cases. And we got some settlements out of that. We also got some main reutilization money. That's where that money is what we see there now. The prior council taking money back from that putting it towards the city building. I will uh, also report that this Really, what's going to be the best thing to look at? Is going to be to put that money down to reduce the month of the year payment, or is it going to be best to just put it for the city building so you can pay cash or the result in or you don't have to put that to take one that down? So, uh, there is everyone pay attention to that. Um, so, like I said, either November 2020 we'll use it, or we will use it for the Uh, water operating, we, uh, Mr. Kiko already did that, and we appreciate him for that. So let's just keep on going through to the end here. Well, I think we covered most of this. Street lighting. We did cemetery, right? Yeah. Yes. Wastewater capital improvement. Those are 7% of consumer charges. That is something that once that wastewater fund gets healthy again, we're going to have to put that in. Because really, it can go for capital, it can go for all kinds of stuff. We do have some money left over in... Um, oh, we already did that out. Okay, good. Wait a minute, did you already go over that fund? Which one? Oh, you yeah. did? Okay, gotcha. I, I didn't have a check mark, thank you. So street lighting. This is the thing for our street lighting assessment. So um, it is usually a wash. Money in, money out. Um, <coughs> this one carries a balance of about... 47, and we are taking the 10,000 out of this one for the LED upgrade that we decided. Okay. So this one, actually, we're going to go back and take 10,000 or 11,000 out of it because you guys agreed to do the LED change out with Miami Valley Lighting. That's going to cost around $10,000. So we originally had that coming out of our street fund, and this is going to be amended and taken out, and we're going to pay for that out of the $47,000. So what we'll do is just take that out and free it and cut project and pay for it. And we'll just collect our revenue and just put it back out when we assess their citizens. Council okay with that? Yeah, okay. The other stuff, you may see these funds that have nothing on them, a dollar on them, $102. Debbie is going to make these inactive. Um, we'll get the money out if we can. Um, Water meter upgrade, I don't know how we're going to do with that. That's a fund for you to pour the water meter, but it's 102 bucks. But some of these funds that you see here, we kept them on here for a purpose. There's no balance. They're inactive funds. They're not going to be included in the There's no 
equivalent of wasting a light item for something that doesn't have any revenue in it. But for the newer council members, we definitely wanted you to kind of see those funds. Ending Waterworks Capital Balance. Yes, that's, okay. our, that's our reserve. Okay, gotcha. So we're good on that. We're not touching, we're not touching any of that? Mm -mm. Okay. And then we have about $275 in a wastewater equipment replacement balance. So, and then... Wastewater equipment replacement. Are you using this five thousand dollars? Yeah, that's the five we're going to use for gotcha. clarifying. Okay, gotcha. It's and the same thing with the contingency. Okay, awesome. So let's go back to the front page. Can I, can I while you're talking about all these, yeah, what yeah, is this C CDDG? That is Community Development Block Grant, and that is our federally funded block grant program that we use. And we had some funds that were from the project for hire. And we actually just expended those to the county because they um, like they overpaid us for a particular project and we had to reimburse. So we just reimbursed okay. out of so, that line item. So it wouldn't impact our general fund. We shouldn't have to do that. <laughs> all right. So all right, let's jump to we'll say planning for last. Okay. And then we'll go to um, parks. We already did. Oh law director. Law director is going to be, I think, about one, two, one, two, three, four pages back at the very top, and it's just a few lines. I think it's five. Oh, five. So right now we had expended about eighty thousand with that. I am not putting that much for Jake. So I, don't um, I don't know what Jake's going to be at the year end. I don't think he's going to come close to sixty. Uh, but we are seeing a drop from the 80 that we already allocated for Lynette. And then we'll go ahead and put 60 in there for Jake for any unforeseen issues that we may come across. That is up for negotiation with council if you guys so choose to do that. We're good with 60? Good, 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 good. Are you good with 60, sir? Yeah. Okay. <coughs> awesome. So we already did parts. <coughs> did you say yeah. what? I'm sorry, can I ask you a question? Oh, yeah. I didn't know what fund it would be. Um, I know there was interest in new decorations on Main Street. That is, we're getting to that. Okay, I didn't know what fund it would be in. Nope, nope, nope. Yeah, land and building. So where are we going now? We did parks already, right? Yes. Yes. Okay, so now you're going to special events, parks, and rec board, and you guys have fun with that. Where's it at? You know, after parks. Oh, special. Oh, parks. Yeah, so okay. parks expense. Page six. Oh. Page six. It's special events, parks, and rec you board. So you have miscellaneous special events for ten thousand. You have a fireworks for special events would be the park and recs that want to do Easter egg hunts, they want to do this, they want to do that, that's what that would come out of. The fireworks are strictly your mark for the fireworks. Now with that said, fireworks, parks and rec board wants to pay for a concert to come in here or a food truck that would come out of that one. But as far as how much you guys want your parks and rec to deal with this year, that would be under the special events. I think parks and rec ought to start out at five thousand. Let's see what they do. I, agree. I mean, we've given them ten thousand, fifteen thousand. They've never done nothing. Yeah. Well, they, they haven't have been able to do anything because they haven't had a quorum, and their Easter right. egg hunt is probably about six of that five thousand. They use six hundred of that five thousand. Oh, six hundred. That's what I said. That's to say six thousand. Five thousand for parks and rec. I, I, and they'll still have some money to work on the fireworks if they do that. What do you mean if they do that? If they take a little fireworks. So. <laughs> I'm not going to be around if they take over. Um, I mean. I'm not getting in the middle of this. I'm fairly mean either, so I, and I even said that. I'll get in the middle of it. I'm not. No. No. Um, I was similar with where he was. I was thinking five. Just to kind of give them some, you know, some testing water to see how they do. I mean, you know, we're in. And you can add the tin form. Yeah. Right. Well, I know that they are going to pay $50,000 to the pool. Yeah. And I think that they have some stuff going on. I don't know how it's going to go. I know that we are very curious about how much the parking and rec board we're going to be getting. We have some heat. And I think he's going to bring some shorts. Yeah. Oh, and I do so too. I don't want to sell them he's too short. He? But I don't yeah. want to give them a long lead. Oh, it's a short. 
Yeah. There was a budget session a couple of years ago. Where we yeah. Yeah. I think that had to do with the current makeup of the council when they were Yeah, I think this is next management. Five. I mean, not the there is any now. I'm just saying. So I really think five to seven for a moment. Ten to fifteen to give them are able to do some things. I don't want to do more. Until and we still, yeah. we still have overall. Right. I mean, yeah. you guys are able to you. That's what I'm saying. So I mean, if they come and said we want to spend eight thousand, not they would. Right. Even if we give them ten thousand, then we still have to prove what they spend, right? We can. They can afford that. Okay. We so. can or we can deny so, yes. it, right? And you're okay. you know, you and Mr. is it Mr. Grimm can be back up. But it's yeah. not like they then too could say, No, you're not doing this in their meeting. They would have to that parts and record have to come to the council. Right. Would have to do it, but yeah. having two having accounts, I think, will help guide them, you know. Um, but, uh, <coughs> I was just pulling it down. Okay, we're going down the line. You go 10. Uh, that was coming. <laughs> Steven and Tim, and if they don't. Can I ask a question before we get to all of this? How do, how, do, how do, I mean, they did not come to council to spend money. This, so how are we going to do? I think they have to, I'm not to interrupt you, but they have oh. a parks and rec bylaw that they need to follow. Right. Is it, what, and when what they is go to it? to expend something, what they need to do is they need to get a hold of me and I will fill out a purpose and I need to wait till they get approval on that purpose. From who? From the finance department. That's true, what you're saying, but at that point, I'm just verifying that the funds are here. I'm not making a decision on right. what they yeah. can buy. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if they come in and, and say, uh, you know, they have bills for $8,000, and I say, okay, there's 10 there, so what? I, I'm not policing that, so right. who is police? I guess that's who, where the that's yeah. that's that's what she's what asking. Yeah. So, so you okay. know. That's my question, is how does it get police mm -hmm. with the budget, well, we budget they have? Right, yeah. one of you two will be there. I think that, you know, with the liaison and you two going to their meetings, we're going to input what they're doing, what they're spending. Once you hear the numbers, hold it, guys. You can only spend this much. We've got to revise the plan. And at that point, they're going to have to revise what they're doing and how they're doing it. If they run out of five thousand dollars, then they're going to have to come back to council. If we gave them ten, they wouldn't have to. They'd go up to ten. Yeah. Well, just to add to what I was saying, so yeah. so it was partly. Uh, I'll take some. It's partly my fault because when I saw the expenses coming in on what they ordered, it is my job to make sure we don't spend $800 for a hammer. It is my job to see that we spend fiscally responsible. So when I saw the bag of candy at $52, I went to Randy and I said, uh, what's going on here? This is, why is th that kind of yeah. expense for one bag of candy? So that's where it kind of started. So, I mean, when the purchasers come to me, I'll be able, I mean, I don't get to say what but I do get to kind of say, wow, you know, can we find something a little less expensive or, or you know, <coughs> like that. So you will get notice from me if I see something way out of line, just like the bag of candy. You know? that's, that's the only thing I saw. But so in the future, as, as we go forward, I mean, that I'll be able to bring that to your attention, to Randy's I mean, attention. But Re kind of related to that, does does the city I mean is there a way one of the things we were saying is if you'd hit the Amazon Prime thing there would have been no problem you know it's not necessarily true when she I don't know, rehash this but 
she submitted the list. We just assumed the list was vetted to be the best price scenario. So when she shared the list, we just add the cart. I politely said to you guys, I'm not there, to, I, they don't report to me. Mm -hmm. I don't, I just assumed when they had everything done, that they would have done the best price possible. I don't care how much their event is. If they want to spend $800 on Easter egg event, that's between you guys and them. Debbie nailed it right on the head. When they go and they spend $54 on a bag of candy, we could have got at Walmart for $8.98. Right. She goes to the and it goes to the council meeting that we're splitting hairs over $200. That's what Debbie's job is to do. So if we see something come in and it's kind of like, whoa, what's going on? We have a, Debbie's got a lot of experience. Howie's got a lot of experience. I got some experience of knowing how much generally things cost. Debbie picked up on it right off the bat. Listen, there's an egg company that they give you a thousand pre-filled eggs for 120 bucks. So we suggested that to them instead of giving them it didn't fly. So, yeah, at the end of the day, whatever they choose, that's between you guys. But, yeah, if they come back and it's a complete out-of-bound price, we're going to say something. Yeah. Well, but yeah. The, this is the only board we have that spends money. Right. We need to have some kind of overseeing of this. Right there. And, but, um, but we don't have any official. That's We're right. There's not no not in their meeting. But then you can say, we can come to the council. We're going to go to council hey, meeting and discuss this. Then you then you tell them, if you have expenses, those bills are submitted to the council for approval. Have have a written procedure so that they have parks and rec bylaws. Yeah, and they're not following them. So I would advise. Oh. Okay. This, this is Councilman Hopkins and Councilman get a Grimm copy of it. Look at those yeah. bylaws. Okay. They should not be expending money until that group itself says yes. Mm -hmm. We have the group approved this. Okay. Yeah. One person can't, can't make that stuff. decision. Yeah, one, yeah, it's no different than you guys. They're they're an extension of City Council. They are bound by the same sunshine rules and same operational rules that you guys are. One person out of that group cannot make the decision. It sounds like. She didn't have experience with that. So well, and that's what I, I said think she'll be meeting. more. This was a learning yeah. curve, and hopefully, from here on out, it won't be a problem. Yeah. And then we're, we're going to be on it, and I talked to her and told her that we'll help her with the rules. So, okay. So I'm just going to make sure I know them. Okay. Did you say what you wanted? We got to do? five. We got ten. We got five. Five, ten, five. I'll go with ten. I mean. I, I want to give them the benefit of the doubt and see I'm if they can produce. I'm kind of on the fence. Um, and you're going to well, be there to police I it know. anyway. I so. I'll, know. I'll do 10. Since one of us will be there, keep an eye on that. Say 10. And now we better make sure we do our job. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay, what about fireworks? Yeah. We got 15000 for fireworks. I want to see that increase a little bit. For oh. what? <laughs> 17. You good with 17 on fireworks? Yeah. Leave it alone. Maybe, oh, okay. Can I it? Well, can I say why I want to raise it? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Last year, where we had them parking out the grass, a lot of them were urinating in the grass. We've got to get more porta johns out there. Mm -hmm. Or better people to attend. <laughs> well, you can tell them they can come in or not, you know. No, I'm did well, they, if they buy out all of the liquor at the there. store, they we have to, to have somewhere to get rid of it. Yeah, but that didn't come out of the. That comes out of the. Yeah. No, we had, we paid, we paid for this. No, that we do, but it comes out different fund. It comes out different fund. I think. Plus, we need to get right. a couple more dumpsters down there because they filled up the baseball's dumpster. Did we ever pay for that? Uh, I, I don't know. I, I don't deal with paying bills. That was never. It's never submitted. Okay, so I'm going to go with a twenty thousand dollar fireworks because. No. Because what she's going to, we have to pay for the contract of the, itself, and if no business donates, that's going to be fifteen, sixteen, probably right there. What, Just for the what? contract itself. Then you got porta johns, you got food trucks, you got all kinds of stuff. Well, food trucks. If you pull in food trucks, actually, food trucks. If they know they're coming to a small event, will require a small down payment. No, I, I have yeah. two, had one in there last year. Uh -huh. Did not charge. Them. Well, that's just him. That's your experience. I have a friend who owns a food truck. Yeah, he goes to small towns to require for down. When you go to bring food trucks in, you don't want to bring more than three into a mean, you know, small function. Any more than that, they all fight, yeah. they all pull up. Yeah, never. 
paid them to come. And if what we done last year, we didn't charge them. We let them come in and set up. That way you don't pay for any food trucks. Well, let me let me throw this out. Um, the Farmers Market Committee is wanting to do something that night. Of the, I think I already mentioned that a little. So I saw Roy from Abe's Hidden Treasures and asked him if he'd plan if they'd planned on doing food trucks that night with their stuff down there. And he said he hadn't thought of it. He says, but if you want me to look into it, I'd be more than happy to. So we're going to do a night market. Harry's flight may do the sugar waffles during the night market. Right. For the heritage of flight, do you pay for the trucks, or do they pay yeah, you? They pay us. Okay. Yeah, thousands of people go there. Oh, well, no baseball. We're bringing an ice. Lots of people, uh, and it's over a long period of time. Slushy cone, Snow whatever cone. you call it. Well, listen, guys. I'm the one who negotiates contract. I'm not trying to put it on that list, but we last year was expensive. Spad Metals gave about seven thirds of that. This contract itself, if you guys want to put on a show like you did last year, is going to be fifteen to twenty thousand probably just for the contract. The only problem we got no new companies coming here that's going to give us a little discount because they haven't come in before. So well, we got American, we got Rosie. If if you get too much money put there, you're going to have too long a show, and basically we could slow that show down, put a little more airtime between the shots, and still have a decent show, and not really spend what did we spent fifteen thousand last year. Somewhere around sixteen, I think it was. How much? 16. It's 16. on here, it's 15. <laughs> Besides that, you're probably still going to have your donation. Well, oh. I would rather just keep 20. Doesn't mean we're going to expend 20, but at the same time, if that contract is 15,000 and one cent, we have to go back and redo everything and do legislation. So, it's either look, That's look probably, room or not. That is probably, I mean, seriously, some of the best money this town spent, I think, in a long time. I mean, obviously roads and stuff. Are, I mean, there's 15,000 in there now, so it's either 20 or 17. As far as showcasing New Carlisle and giving a boost to all the businesses in that area, I mean, you know, Dollar, you know, not Dollar General, um, Arrow Queen was. I like the idea of a firework fight. No. That is a fantastic idea. It's no. on your shoulders. I'm done. <laughs> you just going to leave me hanging like that? You're, it's all yours. I'm done. <laughs> I ain't doing it. If the fight's on the west side of town. All right, so let's get going. Um, that's what we want. Yeah, so we can <coughs> get out of here. What, what, I'm, okay. what I'm looking for is i got to make some boxes to put in the stores for donations. Mm -hmm. I don't know what that's going to cost you. That's why I said 17 We still, with that, with that $2,000, having a plastic box built for, made for donations, then I want to pass the bucket around the night of the fireworks for donations for next year. 17 is fine with me. 17. I mean, if that's a lot of, that's a lot of I'm fine with 17 unless Randy really thinks we need 20. I think we should we do 17. Let's meet in the middle, do 17, call back. 17. I'm fine with 17. I'm, I can compromise. We think. 17. Yeah, because you're doing it. 17 5. You're doing it. I'm, I'm negotiating five. Other than that, I'm done. <laughs> he said 17 5. <laughs> So I hear 18. I got a head. I hear 17.5. You'll give us 17.5? Come on, I compromise. You compromise. 17. Uh, it's not what do you think, we Bill? have to spend it. Whatever you want. No. I, what do you What do you think? And I just don't want to spend there. too much and have this come back and haunt us. Right. Um, oh, well, that ain't going to come back we and haunt us. Spending I mean, $17,000 spend ain't going to be the thing that comes back and haunts us of this. Yeah, it'll be the... Maybe yeah. well, we're going to get to the pools. They're going to take, but it's fine. No, what? No, I wasn't talking about the pool. Oh, right. I was talking about the other, right now, the other building. <laughs> oh, that building? <laughs> I mean, you know, Dale said he would help. In that moment when you think you're on the same page? Yeah, I know. It's like <laughs> pool building. Yeah. What do you think? I said, I needed 30, and you just now want to blow 20 in the sky in five minutes. <laughs> I know. I know. And Welcome to the world of uh, what do you think, Bill? You want to help this year? <laughs> do what? You want to help this year? Well, what do you I think? I just wait for the clarification. Oh. I'm just waiting. 17. 5. We'll compromise. Linda? He said 17. 20. It says 15. 17. 5 is in the middle. 
Come on, Bill, jump in there. 17 five. I, 17 so, five. 17 17 five. Seven Boom. Five. 17 five. Boom. And Seven five. Five. And yeah, the man with the gray shirt. Only for Sold to the man with the white bag. Right. 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 So, only for a parking rack. Okay. So Sold with the white bag. Yeah. Okay, lands and buildings. So we actually have eight minutes left. So Okay. Lands and buildings. So this is where, um, let me pull my capital up. Lands and buildings. I don't think we counted for this yet, did we, Howie? No. no I think Christmas decorations. Oh. oh, no, that's the only thing that is not in there. Mm -hmm. Peer pressure is horrible, isn't it? So here's the other <laughs> kickback, and, and Mr. Mayor, I don't, I'm not trying to ruffle any feathers, but what? we are thinking about getting $10,000 worth of Christmas decorations for our lights. Why are you mentioning my name? Because that might be a compromise off if we if we don't get that. I don't know what you're even talking about. Okay. You got we got your opinion on what which one to get. He just showed me what he was he liked. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, I didn't know like I. I didn't pick him. He picked him. No, mm -hmm. I didn't know how involved you were in. No, that. no. He just showed me what he thought he would like building. to see. Got Who is he? Give your name from being it. mentioned in oh. right oh. after. Parking While he's finding that, I'm going to verify that those will su be suffice on that pole. Oh, okay. Weight-wise. They're oh, 28 okay. and 40 pounds. Really? Let me ask a dumb question. <coughs> Sometime back, we had a discussion about putting the banners with the servicemen's oh. uh, pictures on them, on the poles. Yeah. Where did that go? I mean, it was... Talked yeah. about. Okay, that was discussed at the last CIP. The first guy who did it was too much. Now, I think Miss Eagleson was working with Chrissy to get a little yeah. cheaper price. Which I. What did I tell you she said? Was, was there some discussion about the fact the poles wouldn't have, wouldn't have handled well, they'll, that? They'll well, they'll fit now because they just they put some on for the hair to fight and they were fine. Yeah. Well, my thought was that, you know, if the people were paying for those banners... But we need, yeah, okay. ...then we would have no expense. Yeah, we do. We have wages to put them manpower, up. put them up. Put them up. Yeah, fuel. But just that sunken cost. We're not going to focus on that. But how's that, how's that, how's that going to work? Because we're going to have to have starting money some way, shape. Well, I still like the idea of, of doing that. Daryl, what's your opinion? Dare I did it told again. You, I did told it. You. I did do Darryl. it. Darryl. I'm sorry. No, what is your opinion? Because you're going to be managing that problem, probably managing that project. Uh, night light little banners on the uh, service members. Oh, okay. Thing. I mean, I like the idea. I've seen them. We did them in Fairborn. Um, do you know how much money they call it, they spent on that? They were a lot. I don't remember a dollar amount. Well, West Milton has it. I don't know what they pay. I mean, I'm, you know, I think our cost would be minimal compared to the cost. That's what I'm saying. Is how do you how do you want to charge it? The people going to pay for it? Because if that's as far as case, I'm we'll concerned, we'll just put the payment. We'll just put the order in once we get the payment if, from them. If Therefore, the people we have want a banner, price. then they would sign up, and we would have a company. We order it. Uh -oh. So we can make a flyer, put it up, like here's what it is, here's an example, you pay this much. That way we don't have to really earmark it. Get us this. Right. Right. Okay. right. So is everyone okay with that? They just have them prepay and then boom, yeah. done? Yeah. That way we can give it crispy. I mean, what were we talking about? Two hundred dollars, I think. A I don't think it was that much. To be honest with you, I don't. I don't think it, it was, was that much. I think forty dollars was porting out, but don't quote me on that. Yeah, I, I can't. Our banners for the, which. You know, ours were only designed to be up for a couple of days or a week a year, but uh, those were like 35, 40 bucks. But we do have the Okay. Let me ask you this. Can Christy do those? Huh? Can Christy so, Smith do those? Yeah. So that's something we can work on on ourselves, come up with a flyer, a design, or whatever. So, that's who I talked to, and. Okay, we'll get to that. We'll, we have to figure that out. Yeah. Since we're not, we don't need to know up front, then we can just do it. I like the idea of the program, but having them just cut it, and it's no different. When we have the, someone comes and gets to get the tree from us, they pay for that in advance. Yeah. You know, so it would be the same concept. Okay. That way it burns off us. Council okay with that? Yep. 
Okay, so lands and buildings. This is the one that, you know, this is the city building renovation coming out of. So when we look at the um, CIP, um, right now we did up that to, um, da, 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 the there is the furniture for the new city building on that one. I actually reduced from <coughs> 10,000 to 10,000. So I took half of that off. Where are you at again? Lands and buildings, capital. Capital? Mm-hmm. Why don't I see capital? That's in the second page. Oh, I see it. Capital. Okay. It says government, lands and building, government center, Good. right under materials and supplies. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay, so what we did is we broke this up. So lands and buildings is 79500 and that's going to cover... The asbestos removal at Madison Street School, forty thousand. Uh, demo in addition at the city garage for twenty-five thousand, and two thousand five hundred in hand tools. So that constitutes that seventy-nine five thousand to four hundred sixty thousand is for the building renovation. Um, we had earmarked four thirty of that. I did put additional twenty in because we have a wiring quote to wire. Some of the stuff that I could do without putting it out to bid is actually going to save us around 15, 20% markup. So that additional 20,000 is because I did not put the wiring in with the bid. We'll have a separate company coming to do that. That's save us money. Question. Mm -hmm. What you're saying here on the bid has already come back from the architect. No, we haven't got an estimate back. That is our estimate I, I, that we've earmarked. I don't know how you can go off of that if you don't know what he's got. Well, you got to put something in there. And when he was sitting there, the architect quoted us in the building, no more than 450. If that number sticks, great. If not, but we got to put something in the capital to account for that. Position. The same number we discussed last year. You're gambling there. Well, it doesn't matter if it comes back at 300,000 or 600,000. You got to have a number in there to start. If it's $300,000, we know we got enough to pay cash. If it's $600,000, we come back to you guys, say, how do you want to move forward? Right. You have $400,000 here. 430 and again why I mentioned the Twin Creek stuff you have about 250 there you know so it's just creative financing of how to do it but you have to have a number in there to start to come to an end. If you if you write a budget for home and you have an emergency and you take you go back in and amend it and don't go on vacation uh, you know but you have to have something there to start to plan how you're gonna spend your money. Uh, Question. Mm -hmm. If you take this budget basically where we started without any of the changes that we had, you had the million dollar surplus. Where are we coming out at the bottom? No, do we have a question. number? I do. The, what we're going the to end ask. figure. Yeah, an end figure. Oh, for the general fund? Yeah. yeah it's no, right. of the of the budget. Right now, as it's right now. Four hundred thousand. We're going to have 400000 left. That is the projection. You pull it back up. After I've done all this stuff, just ending general fund balance with the changes we have done. It was at like 500 when I started, but then we did some things. Your ending general fund balance. And this is still holding that Twin Creek fund out there. What number you got? 464, 19926. Yeah, that's what it is, minus the $40,000 from the pool that's not accounted in that. So 440 around. Okay, but this is still holding that Twin Creek money out there? That's a completely, that's not even in the general fund. That is a completely different fund. So right now, paying for the, if that, we expended all that money for the capital, I mean for the city building renovation, the 430, everything as is, we are projected to have 400 and... 424, 19920. There it That's is. 424. So if we put another 150,000 in there from Madison Street School, we could take that down this year. I would not recommend that. I know you wouldn't, but I did. That is up for your council, but you're actually, you're, you're, um, <laughs> that project ain't going to get done this year. Um, Why? Because there's a lot that works to go into it. We'll have to go out to bid. I mean, even if we got the. I, and you are, you got a lot. That's why I have stressed many times this evening, the city is underdoing a lot of investment this year. Mm -hmm. I have no problem with investing for that Madison Street School. We have $40,000 prepping it for the asbestos to get removed. That I happens first. That. And I say, like I told you on the phone, I think we should really aim for that for 2021. 
because once we get done with the city building, that revenue should spike back up. Spike. And another thing with that is trying to get trying to get that done by other means. Um, I will be writing a letter to the county seeking money um, to get that done. On yeah, their with behalf. that with that money they're getting. Um, they recently gave City of Springfield a million dollars for a parking garage. I've been talking with the county administrator. I have the county strategic plan in my inbox, and I'm going to force my letter around that. I'm also working with the we working with the county as well for the land bank. Um, I agree with you, and I think we're on the same page that it needs to come down. I think that we're making progress on it by spending the the money to get the asbestos out and then earmark and really shoot for that 2021 to get that building down. 2021, 2022, aiming for 2021. Mm -hmm. But we have got a lot of, we got a lot on our plate for 2020. Yeah. A lot. Shelter house, city building, medic purchases, investment in the planning and zoning department. That's our shining star right there. Yeah. Who we haven't heard from yet. We, he wanted to go last. We're going to okay. honor that for him. I only have about an hour, so we'll go. <laughs> you know, so that's something if council wants to decide if you guys want to do that. I work as a thread, we all do. However, if you guys want to discuss it, um, I, like I said, I think that it's very ambitious for us because here's the thing with that, Mr. Cook. Save that building, the bending real ambitions come back at 530000 We can still pay cash for that. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. We can still go back and reallocate our funds and pay cash for that. And still come out with about three hundred thousand. Now we're going to put one hundred fifty thousand and take a Madison Street school down. Mm -hmm. So that's just where I'm at with it. It's up to you guys. Um, what is your opinion, Debbie? You know, my my thinking Finance is purpose. that that building's been sitting there vacant for as many years. We've been putting it off as long as we can, and now that we see the light at the end of the tunnel, we need to get it down because we don't know what next year is going to bring. Well, I do know what next year's going to bring, and that is hopefully another uh, banner year of income tax collections and, you know, an ending fund balance that, that's healthy. You know, because there's another ghost elephant in the room, and that's called that water tower. We have to do the hydraulic study, and if they're going to force us to take that down, or if you guys decide to save it, if you guys decide to save that $330,000 at least to keep it up. Yeah. So, you know. Um, $330,000? Well, we've we've done a research show, you well, know, so there's just a lot of ambitious to keep projects. It in service. I'll, I'll do respect to all you seven. We're going to I, do I, how you guys want us to do. We'll talk. Again, my recommendation is you're doing a lot of fast forward thinking and improvements for 2020, uh, including work on prepping the Madison Street School to come down by the asbestos removal, and then you get it down in 2021. You get it done next year. Well, if. I'm saying if if we decided move forward with the school or regardless whether it was this year or next year, it's got to even though you've got from what I think I understand is a decent price to get it down, but it still has to go out for bid, correct? And it still has to go for bid, and that price is just a general. Right. General no, I know, but what I'm saying is how long that that process alone takes a little while, right? Well, we've got a very sh limited staff, and we have a lot of big projects on us this year. Right. I'm just so, I'm just saying what's I mean to do something out for bid. It, I'm assuming it takes a couple months. Start at minimum. Mm -hmm. Start to finish. Okay. That's not including specs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Well, I think since we are going to do the re re remodeling, no the renovation, no. no taking out the asbestos, no, no removal. prepping, yeah, mm -hmm. and um, that's a start. And then we wouldn't have that expense for the next year. And we do have a lot of projects this year, so I'm kind of for you know taking out the asbestos and then going forward for next year i get really nervous once that general fund i mean i was happy at five hundred thousand. now it's down to 420 or 440 that's when i get really nervous if we spend everything on if you spend everything yes but still you have to allocate as you are right. it doesn't mean we are but you have to when you plan for things you have to plan for the worst you have case to assume scenario. that you're going so yeah you know with that being said, you know, with the wastewater plant being so low, if Ooh. something happens there, you know, we're going to have to put more debt onto the wastewater plant or pull from the general fund, you know. Um, so, and it, but if, and another thing, flip side of this is too, if something major happens in the water department and we're allocating that whole repayment in one year, the general fund balance is what it is because there's a hundred and something thousand coming in from the water department that should only be 28. But since that doing good, it's coming into the general fund. Well, God forbid something happens massively in that water plant. 
we're going to have to redo and not put all that money in there for this year. So, like I said, there's a lot of big things on for this year that the public should see and appreciate that, hell, we are doing, heck, we are doing stuff. Oh, yeah. But all due respect, that's just that's just my opinion on that. I think we just need to cut our losses with the building downtown, sell it, take the school down, and let's build over there. So you want that makes no sense to me, sir. What do you mean it don't make no sense? Because you own the property. Do you know how much it costs to build commercial? Okay. You, know, you don't have to have an extravagant building. I need a building to house seven, seven full-time people and storage yeah. and all kinds of stuff. And if you think you're going to build from scratch under 600, uh, whatever we got, million. I mean, that's, 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 that's a $2 million project all right, right there. Well, let's, I mean, let's just go down the lines and see what everybody else thinks about the school. What do you say, Linda? Get rid of the asbestos and stick it out. Get rid of the asbestos. We'll look at other avenues. Uh, same, because one more year, at least we're working towards it. I'll agree, especially with, you know, and I know you've been on the county commissioners a lot lately, and, you know, I've been reading some articles where they've been getting some money here and there, and you know it's going to get sent to Springfield unless we keep on them. So, hopefully. I'm also asking for some money for a building renovation, too, but I don't want to get everyone hopes up. Right, so. No, I want it down just as, not as much as Mr. Cook does, but I, I'm fine waiting at least another year. And I'll be more transparent with that statement. All right, I'm trying to debate is it do I ask them for money to tear down the school? Do I ask them for money for the renovation of our downtown? And I ask him, I'm thinking that with my head because if I was commissioner, I'd be more likely to give money for a building renovation because but, that's people are in there, they're using it, the citizens benefit from it. Like their part of the there's other avenues that the county can provide right. to help with the land bank. But that just frees up money for us to knock that. Oh yeah, out. if the county comes in and gives us two hundred thousand dollars for that building renovation, that's a bonus. Yeah. Plus, so. Linda, Linda, and Peggy are going to win that for us. Oh, don't <laughs> for the HGTV. When are they going to decide on that? I they haven't. Oh, I haven't seen they, anything. Oh, I was just Keep curious. Doing, they're supposed to air everything in 2021, so oh. they'll so have to be doing all the work this summer. Cool. Yeah. Okay. We know how Mr. Cook feels. Yeah, we know we're out. Yeah, because I wasn't trying to steal you. We already know. I'm here to midnight. I say get rid of the asbestos and see what the county commissioners do or won't do or. Okay. You know where I'm at. I know. That's why I'm not asking. <laughs> I'm sorry. I was talking to Howie. What was, was Miss Eggleston? No, we just I asked her what her opinion was. She, I didn't hear it. Same as. So, so the, we're sticking with the, the other five. five. Okay. Another lands and building thing, the $10,000 for um, Christmas decorations. What is oh, the council's yeah. opinion on that? I love it because every year people were commenting on how shabby ours looks. I have to agree. I, and these I are decorations the that are going to go on our light poles. You may have a little more information about that. Well, as I say, our roof lights aren't shabby. Is it more the Christmas tree? No, the wreath. Like the wreath with the Yeah, real... they're just a plain non-lit wreath. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah, I did get a quote from Ron for 10000 for, I forget how many it was. I'm just going to verify. I'm going to give the cut sheet for those poles to that manufacturer and say, can we hang 28 pounds off the side? Yeah. doesn't sound like a lot, but oh, I just want to make sure before we put it on a, a pole like that. Does, yeah. Just, and then if they're good, I don't that stuff is expensive. They will show me the yeah. catalog for that commercial. I'll give you a minute. It's not cheap. It, it was no. just a, a wreath with no lights. It it just didn't stand it's out. Right sure, here. sure. And I, yeah, I get that. I think there was some ones that Ron showed me with silhouette snowmen. There was packages yeah. that weighed 40 some pounds. Is that something that was going to sit at the foot? It's a, no, the one he showed me, it was, a, it was a big wire lit Christmas gift that goes over top of the globe. Oh, yeah, okay. So the globe lights up the Christmas Okay, present. yeah. That was 48 and, pounds. Yeah. So I'll just verify that it will work with our pole. Right. So, yeah, I don't have a problem with it. I think it's. Again, it's you know you mentioned it earlier. I mean, I know we can't go and light every pole with nice decorations or a brand new pool or, or you know whatever. But I mean, these little steps of showing that you know you're paying these taxes, we're making improvements. Yes. Ready to go home. 
Back to you, Mr. Bridge. If we did it much longer, I won't have to go to the more dinner. You ate them all. You didn't even bring me in. contest between her and April, I think. Hey, Howie. Howie, that 10, did we put that in here? Is that what that means for under the plans and bills? No, because we know we already spent it. You added 460. I'm getting hungry. You added 10 there. 571. Well, we're waiting on that. <laughs> we're waiting on you to finish up the strip steak. Oh, no, wait a minute. Sorry. Sorry. <laughs> the strip steak? Yeah. The strip steak. It was 875, oh. so 79 pounds is what you did, so. Yeah. You added 12. Right now there's yeah. 67. Five. Your neighbors. Say 79. Um, yeah, if it was 12,000, yes. yes. Maybe oh, already 12, did. Yeah, maybe so already did. So we're I'm sure he'd uh, make yeah. tacos That's in exchange right. for his water, $1,200 water bill. That's unfortunate. You he talked to me about it. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, there it is. There it is. Right. 79, five minus Got a toilet yeah. upstairs yeah. running. This includes 79, what, 79, 79 Christmas thousand. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I, it's 12,000, not 10, sorry. Oh, okay. Oh, is it still wrong? Who is this? Uh, Mr. Shock himself. Oh. Mm -hmm. I know him. <laughs> I knew him when I did real estate. All right. So, anybody else have any discussion on that? No. Nope. No. Move on. Moving on. I don't know what you guys do. You said 12. Are you okay with that? No one yes. said anything, so. Okay. Well, check. Move right. on. Mr. Cobb? No. No what? Oh, no. oh you said no one. I've been hitting this thing all day with my knee pad. Oh, is it you making all that noise? Yeah. Well, just stuff? don't buy these when we replace the tables in the shelter no, house. <laughs> no problem. Okay. Carry on. So we're good with the clock? Yes. Everybody yeah. else okay? Yeah, okay. <coughs> General fund miscellaneous, yeah, um, miscellaneous items, postage meter fee, uh, state audit grant fees, those are something, a lot of that stuff we just we kind of have to do. Uh, code, we're going to have code patient update, that's when I do the prior year's ordinance and they get online the American legal. Does anyone, any questions over anything from miscellaneous? Oh. No. no. Okay. General fund transfers, that 60000 we had talked about for the pool, so that's going from <coughs> 60. Bless you. And those other two transfers, the 71923 and the 95738 one is for of the general course. obligation debt and one for 22 debt. So that leaves our general indie fund balance once we go to make this up at a projected $424,000. And I will say with as much as the general fund's taken on this year with the oh. investments, that's oh. actually unhappy. But depending on the cost of the bill. Okay, so with that, further ado. Oh, okay, no, no, that's fine. You know what I was going to bring up, right? You do it right, buddy. I guess not this Oh, that's good. You don't want to know me anyway. <laughs> he's, 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 I'm not going to say. He's a nice guy. That's Mr. Cook. Cook. Cobb. It's right after finance. Right there. Let's get oh. One. oh. Page four. Yep, okay. here we got go. it. Got it. All right, so this, uh, always, we've always had a planning budget, but uh, look at the history. Um, this is, this is very, it's not very, this is a brand new apartment. Wages are going to cover my wages as well as the two part time employees. So with that, with that covers the part time employees, they will cover the time to find it. And you'll be full time. Uh, 
so with these, with the Medicare and, and everything that's, that's there, uh, with the part timers, we don't have as much uh, expenses. If you do notice on the medical insurance, it's only $1,000. I do not have the car insurance. down to training, travel, and transportation. Uh, it is very important to me for to for the best to be trained um, to stay current. There's not a lot of training on the This training and, and uh, travel fund of four thousand dollars for the membership Plus, they have that introduction to things. No matter what's on there. Uh, the zoning ordinance you see there, the budget line there, the zero there. Uh, so this would be for like code rights, free rights. Uh, so I get I have the free rights. Uh, Loading, proper maintenance code. So there's going to be a lot done in house. So that is the training transportation. So down to the contractual. Contractual law. Uh, communication services. So that's basically at that $3,000 is two million. Maintenance of facility. So this is a big one. So we have seventy-five thousand dollars on this line. Right? This is maintenance facilities. Uh, we are looking at uh, renaming this to community development. So what these funds would do is fund projects involving uh, code enforcement and uh, community development, as far as hospital demos. Uh, they could go toward. Uh, I had here in Fairlawn. We did a so we gave fund of that uh, through our city <coughs> yeah. So what we did with those is we had your basic hand tools, we had your basic power tools, um, electric, and gas power, the remote controllers, um, and residents, just to show you who can can come to the bar with us at no cost. Okay, so they would we, give them the tools. So, um, in, in this program, not only like, we'll have ladders, wheelbarrows, we'll have all this stuff to have. So uh, there'll be like set hours. We have two days a week that we have we'll a block of hours. We can run by volunteers oh, yeah. or yeah, we'll like that. Well, yeah. so um, kind of work on. Very successful people love it. So you know, so not all we only out there. Yeah. Um, nice our first guys obviously they're up here very good concept of funding all those things so not only you know can we identify violations, but we also provide the students you know, the <coughs> In the past I have gotten <coughs> donations in that uh wording shed uh from my partner store in the case. Uh the domain white primer, white paint, and we would offer that pretty far up there. So if say they need some touch ups outside, um, you know, So, really, for for a lot of violations that maybe some people can't correct because we don't have the tools, we can go ahead and those tools So, it, it's a really good program. Um, we will have to come up with some type of contract which basically says you know, it's free of cost, but um, say it gets stolen or it's you not know, you know, returned, you know, basically turn into a theft. These are tools and these are things that you can maintain ourselves. Um, 
people who take donations on the other piece of goods, upgrade the mower just to pull the heck out of the mower, or the mower works fine, we can take that donation and make sure that's off of the So it's, it's a great program. So, so this will come out as well. Um, I have extensive experience in demotions. Uh, we did a lot of demotions, residential and commercial. Um, so this is just 75 doesn't go a long way when you're talking about demotions. Mm -hmm. um, now, I'm going to be working close with uh, the Land Bank in Springfield. Um, it's a great uh, program that they have. Uh, and it's a way for us to even alleviate some of our costs of the programs. So there's a lot there, a lot out there. Um, maintenance of equipment. Uh, so that could be toward that. Uh, those, um, those that equipment in the cooling shed. It could be um, just your general thing. So like we have. Um, uh, it could be anything. anything you say you have a the printer goes down. Anything. I mean, it's equipment that's used for the actual department. Yeah. Handheld GPS unit. You have to get that repaired. There's a printer's um, map drawer that you're going to have. Yeah. Breaks. I mean, we can get that stuff. So that's basically. It's just a catch-all, really, for anything that requires maintenance. Mm -hmm. The next line on computer software hardware. Um, so we currently don't have a type of. So we don't. We don't. Have any. No. No. Uh, so um, a code enforcement software that's going to help them track their violations, track notices, uh, keep all that history information in there. Um, I've, I've used several software uh, manufacturers. And, um, Got one in mind, oh, so right. that would that would eliminate that. Usually, those are uh, now they're cloud based, so it's not going to be actual small hardware, so it's going to be you know, your maintenance fee, maintaining the software. Uh, legal advertisements, so that's going to be for uh, so it, it could be for. If you have to. That that's any like if you, like a planning board, BZA, oh, any, board. Yeah, anytime they meet there has to be legal advertising going by that. Yeah. What if they have absent homeowners? Hmm. So absent homeowners. You know, person has a house. And that would just, that, yeah, that that'll just be like a mailing that we get. Oh, that won't be illegal. Right okay. So the no. planning board anytime they meet, like if he has a planning board or board of zoning appeals meeting our code states, you gotta send a letter out to three hundred people, then you have to legal add it to it. So it's no different when we legal add to your council meetings. Mm -hmm. uh, we get the membership dues and publications the same thing as memberships for myself and, and or our code enforcement guys, so this will cover uh, any of the uh, associations that will that we would be using. Mm -hmm. Office supplies, operational supplies, that's just going to be our, just our daily operational uh, office supplies. Uh, uniforms, uh, personal safety. Uh, we, we're at 750. Uh, it's important, I think, for code guys to have good footwear uh, and definitely to be identified when they're out in, in the field. So we you will know, have uh, t-shirts you know, clearly marked up there in the city employee and not someone you know, uh, marking the neighborhoods. Uh, so I, I feel that's very important. Uh, fuel, we do have one vehicle that will be shared um, to the current vehicle that we have, so the gas use will go up compared to what it has been in the past. Uh, in the past 20 to 30 hours a week, that will be about Capital outlay, we got at 22,000. Uh, so, what this is the capital outlay and the miscellaneous, these are higher because we're basically starting from scratch. <coughs> we do not have computers <coughs> and iPads for these three positions, so we're, we're, we are starting from scratch. Uh, so next year, these probably won't be, uh, this land won't be as high. Uh, it also, uh, GIS, uh, we, we do not have a GIS. Um, nothing that we have really in the city is GIS, you know, as far as site plans and for utilities and everything. So this is a, uh, this will be a chance if we can get this GIS and it can be shared between all of our departments, between wastewater, um, street department, water, um, to be able to start locating and actually mapping out all the city buildings and stuff. Which we are way behind the ball on. Very, very, very behind the ball on. 
Um, so right now we're looking at a 292-600 total planning expense. Um, at this time I'll take any questions. Which one go? Which one go? <laughs> I mean, just bounce. You guys good? I when you ask Derek questions, I just ask you guys about the funds because on one, on next council meeting we will be going to executive session, and I, that's the opportunity for council to really get in there and really talk to them about. Them. A lot of your questions I heard tonight. I have lots of suggestions that we can support. Budget relating that you know, we're going to have to ask us for that. Is my first question at the end is that we'll be discussing. Yeah, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to drag it anymore, but overall, I mean, this is probably one of the more, one of the things I'm most excited about for this year, <coughs> this whole new approach mm -hmm. to the entire city, so I'm thrilled. Well, now we have Derek in there, hopefully that explains a little bit better why I want to go to the different avenues with that Madison Tree School, because there are so many available resources for that school. So many resources. There's, there's lots of funds out there, lots yeah. of grants. Um, I hate to see waste of grant money. And, uh, you know, the county is limited because County and whole population is not small, right? County. So they don't get as much. In Green County, just in the city of Fairborn alone, we got five hundred thousand dollars just for CBG. We got two hundred fifty for Chip. I mean, we had a big pot of money because the population was larger, uh, and a lot of our other municipalities in Green County didn't take it. You know, here in Clark County, they don't. Work. I mean, they get a fraction of that amount. So we are. Springfield gets their own. So Springfield does get allocated their own. So uh, they do end up getting some, but. Um, I think there was two hundred thousand dollars is split among the eligible communities in Clark County. Springfield is bigger than Fairborn. Oh yeah. yeah. Springfield's an entitlement. Yeah, Springfield themselves. gets their own. Yeah, their entitlement company. They get yeah. their. I mean, they get their direct. They get their grants direct from the state. We ours comes through the county, and then the county gives it out to. But as long as we have projects and we have things on the books to show them that hey, this money's not going to go to waste. We have a better chance of getting as much. Um, and not always do the other communities use that money. Because mm -hmm. yeah, the county seat in Green County, they used to send hundreds of thousand dollars back to Green County. So, I mean, so oh. we're going to die and we can get our hands on. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> All right. Any questions on the planning and zoning budget? Concerns with any finances on the planning and zoning? No. Are we good, Council? Yep. Okay. Um, I think we're done through the budget. Anything, Debbie, you have anything extra? April? Anything extra for the council? Ladies in the back, anything extra? I had one more, Mr. Bridge. Oh, you do? Thank yeah. you. Oh, yeah. um, I'll probably be like the, the bad guy for bringing this up, but I'm going to bring it up because I'm not bashful and I have no problem doing it. I wanted to ask, I know it's been brought before, does anybody want to entertain? Council getting a raise. And I'm not talking anything drastic. I'm talking no, no. no. Okay, no. We well, there's only two out of the five, two out of the seven. And the only reason I say it is I'm speaking solely for myself. I can't speak for anybody up here. I've been in council eight years, and council hasn't had a raise since I think 2004. I don't know. I don't know what it is, it's but not, it's long. If you guys voted in, it takes some time to come in. Second. Right. I just, I just figured I'd ask. I mean, me first, I wouldn't have a problem with it, but I also know that that's a touchy situation for some people to even think about agreeing to. And I'm for it. One of the reasons why is I wasn't even sure I was going to run this time because my retirement penalized me for working in OPERS because I'm on Medicare. They used to pay for my supplemental insurance, which was $337 a month. Now, after taxes, I'm getting 341 So. Here's, here's what I was. Um, Her situation is a little different. The only thing I, what I was thinking was is, if it was to even at all being entertained, you know, I thought, you know, we get paid monthly $50. If it was raised $50 per person per month, that's $4,200 a year. If you went to 100, obviously it would be 84. So, I mean, if not, it's not like I'm just it. I mean, I, the other bad part about that situation. I'm just saying, for my two cents, I've been on council for eight years. I've poured my heart into the city, but I'll continue to do so if not. <coughs> 
the only, the only thing I wanted to say was the fact that if you put a raise through, that will not be effective until the new council comes back in 22. They would be the first people to receive that. Nobody on the existing council mm -hmm. would be eligible. I don't think it's written oh. like that. I think it starts yeah. with the it waits until the new, and that once that new, then everyone gets. I don't know. I haven't looked at that legislation, but I read it. This came up a while ago, um, and I pulled the legislation on it. You know what? I shouldn't have said anything because I really don't know. I, it's all right. You know, well, I'm sorry. I do apologize because I don't know if it goes. It goes against it's, everyone or the new. It, it, it would be. Our three seats are up in the beginning of 22. We would be the only, th or that person that comes on to take our place, or if we choose to run again, would be the only three. At that point, the rest of you would not get that raise till two years after that. So it would be 24. Okay. So if you put a raise into effect while you're in office, you cannot receive that raise until you run again okay, and right. are reelected. Oh, yeah. That's that is go. how the raises yeah. go. So it's okay, well, you know. You, you put it in effect, and nobody right now gets it. But when you when your term comes and you run again, that's when you'll get the raise if you get reelected. Okay. So you're voting for for them three. I'm yeah. Well, they get won't them. even. They won't get no. the raise. They <laughs> no. won't get the raise right now either. Unless they, they get reelected. Re right. Yeah, again, I just so I just wanted to ask and see what everybody thought. While you're so. currently elected, it doesn't. You don't get it. Receive it till you get reelected. Right. Okay. So well, we got our answer. So. I'm done. Okay. Council. Move to adjourn. Oh, and oh, one oh, more I thing. Gotta, I gotta write this down now. One Council. more thing. Council. Again, Mr. Bridge. Yes. Ms. Watson, Chief, Eric, Mr. Kitko, thank you guys again for everything you guys do. Uh, I always get I always get nervous. I mean, I think everybody does going through this and spending money, but you, you know, with obviously council's help, past council's help, and and you, uh, we've led the city down the right path so far. So I think we're in good shape. No, we appreciate uh, the kind words. Um, we will continue on working uh, diligently for the citizens and council, but it is always a team effort. Always. Thanks for the two young ladies coming yes. through for a dull and dry and boring session. Uh, we need to make a motion You get to extra credit so for spending. Hold on. I could just yeah. take How okay. many hours? Four hours? Huh? Was it you first? first boring. First, second. First, second. Who was the second? second. Bill Cook. I got to call a vote, right? Yes. Yes. Just, yes. 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 I'll do it officially. Yes. Councilwoman? Yes. Yes. Councilman Grimm. Councilwoman Abelson Nowakowski. Yes. Councilman yes. Cobb. Councilman Abelson. Councilman Cook. You said yes. We're here. <laughs> <laughs>